morning, everyone can be seated. <coughs> okay. All right. Just as a reminder, again, today, when the testimony is taking place, please do not make any motions or gesture in any way that would either relay that you're agreeing or disagreeing with what's being said. Also, do not distract the jurors from their task at hand. Please silence your devices. Do the parties have anything to raise this morning? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Let's bring in the jurors. Yep, you can come up and take the stand again. But you remain under oath, sir. Everyone may be seated. Good morning, members of the jury. We are going to continue with the direct examination of Mr. Adelson. Mr. Rashbaum, when you're ready, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Call number UU, which is on May 4th, 2016. Around 11 minutes into the call, you it's a call with you and your mom. You ask your mom if everything is okay. And she says uh, she doesn't want to talk on the phone. And uh, you ask her whether um, you should come down and you agree to meet the next day. Do you, re you remember that call? Yeah, I do. Um, what did you think when that call happened? Did you think that there was another activity? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, in fact, <clears throat> excuse me, on that morning, your mom had received a text in the early morning which said, so you don't take me serious. You think I'm playing. You have some... Puta, call me to see if I'm for real. If you think what Katie baby daddy did for you can't come back, you're fucking crazy. I want the number now or I'm going after the 100K. The 100K that they're threatening to go after is, is what? Do you know what the 100K is? The uh, reward for the uh, solving the murder of Dan Markell. Okay. And... Uh, you see that text. Do you go meet with your, your parents the next day on May 5th? Yeah, I went down in the afternoon the next day. And um, when you saw that text, um, did you take it as more threatening or less threatening than the prior activity by law enforcement? M much more threatening. And how were your parents when you saw them? 
my mom was upset. I mean, that she get, gets a message, a call, a text at two o'clock in the morning from some nut who may be a Latin King gang member, and maybe maybe we're wrong, and it's and it's not the police, and it is a Latin King gang member. Now, at this point in time, though, what was your firm belief? I was I was fairly certain it was the police. So you have this discussion with your parents, and I think it was outside by the pool, right? Uh, yeah. The community pool? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and what do you and your parents decide? I said it's, you know, it's more than likely the police, but it, it still could be some some crazy guy who's, who's not afraid. I mean, I'm very afraid of Sigfredo Garcia, so this person is obviously not afraid of him. So it's, it's either, it could be a nut or it could be the police. I said, let me hear, I want to hear him one more time to confirm that uh, that we, that is the police. So when I spoke to them, I said, you know what, can you please call this guy up and record the conversation so we could, I can hear him again. Okay. Now, you leave your parents' house and you go to a friend's business. Do you recall that? Yeah, I went to my friend Adam's office. Okay. And at some point in time, while at the business, um, there is a call, and I believe this is YY. Well, before YY, there is a call um, where you're talking with Catherine Magbanawa, right? Yes. And you tell her um, that you're going to call her from a landline, correct? Yes. Now, first of all, why do you tell her you're going to call from a landline? Because I was just pulling into his parking garage and I was about to lose reception, get into the elevator, and I get bad reception in his office. When you called her from the landline, yep. did you call her cell phone or did you call another landline? No, I, I called her cell phone and I told her I was calling her from a landline because she wouldn't if she didn't recognize the number, she may not pick up. So I was telling her, I'm going to call you back in a, in a minute, but I'm going to call you from the office. Did you tell her, I want to call you from a landline to another number? No, I, I wasn't trying to hide anything. I just wanted to have good cell service. Did you do star 67? No. I just didn't want her to see the number and not pick up because she won't recognize it. Now... On May 6th, after some calls back and forth, your mom reaches the undercover, correct? Yes, she does. And uh, we've heard that call with your mom, but what does she tell the undercover to do? She says to him, go to the police and go get your reward. Call the police. If you know what happened, go tell them what happened and collect your reward. Now, you and your mom had known what had happened to some degree for 20-some-odd months. Uh, I found out a lot in 2016 before I went into the restaurant. But, uh, yeah, we, we knew a lot more than the police knew. Why didn't you go to the police and collect your reward? I, I would have been killed. There was, I didn't want to tell anybody. So they would have come after my family. Yes. Now, after your mom speaks to the undercover, she speaks with you, right? And that's uh, State's Exhibit CCC? Yes. And she says that she used a handpiece. You remember that? Yeah, sure. What is the handpiece that she's referring to? I, she, I'm assuming it was her cell phone, but I... I didn't know if it was her cell phone or she recorded it with an old-fashioned tape recorder or how she did it. And she says that there's a new app she loaded. What did you understand that to mean? I guess she loaded an app on your telephone that allows you to record a conversation. And she said, you asked her how long was the call, something to that effect. And she says that it was, that it was eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And that was significant to you. Why was it significant to you that the call was eight minutes? 
because it meant the guy who was threatening had wanted to talk for a while. And I mean, when someone's extorting you, they they want something. They're straight to the point. They tell you what they want and what they're going to do to you if you don't pay. And an eight minute call again wasn't the way it was done to me. Now during this call, there's words like patient used by your mom, uh, models, dental models. Uh, why is she talking the way she's talking? I lectured my mom on being really careful about what you say and don't, I don't want to talk about anything involving the extortion or anything that happened. So she went overboard with some things. I mean, she could have been more blunt, but I mean, this was just her overall just being super careful. Is your mom scared? Extremely scared. The next day, May 7th, do you meet with your parents? Yes, they came to my house. And what did you do with your parents when you met with them? I went outside and my mom played the uh, recording of the uh, of the Latin supposed Latin King gang member that was trying to extort my family for money. And a after you heard the recording, what did you think and how did you feel? Uh, I felt so much better. I mean, it's, I wasn't happy that the police thought that we did a murder, but I was very happy to know that it, it wasn't the Latin Kings that were extorting my family again and that nobody was going to get hurt. Nobody was going to get killed. So I, I felt very relieved. Now, DDD, which is a call on May 7th in the evening, um, is a call where you're talking about a CD and dropping the mic and there's a lot of background noise in the back. First of all, where are you when this call is happening? Okay, it was a Saturday. It was the Fort Lauderdale Air and Sea Show, and I was on a small boat with my friends, and they were blasting the radio, and I was drinking, and I uh, and that's when I made the call or picked up the call. And why are you talking the way you're talking on the boat? How many people are on that boat? There was like six or seven people standing around me, and I wasn't about to let anybody know what was going on in my life. And again, why are you relieved? I'm relieved that it's the police. It's, nobody's going to get killed. My mom's, you know, for two weeks was afraid that someone was going to get hurt, hurt her and then someone else in the family was going to pay. My dad wasn't going to work. Uh, he thought he was going to get killed in the parking lot. Um, and then I, after hearing that call, I, that's not a worry of mine anymore. Do you remember when you found out that Sigfredo Garcia was arrested? Yes, I do. Um, how did you um, find that out? Um, I got a text message. Either a text, or it was a text message I got. And did you think that you were about to get arrested as well? Did I fear I was going to get arrested? Yes. I didn't think I should get arrested, but I know that this was definitely the police that were doing this investigation, and I know why they were doing it, is they thought that we were part of this murder. Did you ever reach out to Catherine Magbanua after the arrest? No, I did not. Why not? Because my friend, who's a close friend of mine, an attorney, called me up on the phone, and he said, you cannot, he said, do not call Katie and do not talk to anybody about this case or what's going on. And Katie never called me either. With regards to Catherine Magbanua, when the arrests occurred of Catherine Magbanua, did you still think that she was not guilty? Yes. When did that opinion change and when did you realize that she was actually the person behind the extortion? It wasn't till 2019 when she went to trial and she said that she uh, she never knew who Dan Markell was. Um, she didn't say anything about what really happened. Um, I found out then that she was cheating on me with Sigfredo Garcia and she was sleeping with him at the same time she was with me. She was lying about that. Um, and then I saw her bank account and then I was like, this girl's not broke. Like I was getting played and I saw all the money that was piling into her bank account.
and did all the pieces then start to come together for you? Yeah, yeah, I, I realized what, what happened. Now, we've heard some testimony that after the bump and after the arrest, your personality changed. Sure. That testimony true? Yes, it is. Why, why did your personality change? I mean, the, the police thought that I was part of a murder. Uh, they're releasing a probable cause affidavit saying that they want to arrest me for murder. Um, I didn't have anything to do with the murder. I knew that there wouldn't be any evidence to show I had anything to do with the murder. But, you know, it's, it's scary as hell to think that you're one signature away from losing your life. Now, we've also heard some testimony that throughout the years, you would get upset when you would see or hear the news about this case. Yes, very. Why would you get upset? Because they, they don't have any idea what really went on. And I couldn't say anything to anybody. Charlie, I'm going to ask you again. Did you have anything to do with the murder of Professor Dan Markell? Absolutely not. Were you a principal in his first degree murder? Absolutely not. Did you conspire in any way to murder him? Absolutely not. Did you solicit anyone to murder him? Never. One moment, Your Honor. John? <laughs> Cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Do a quick audio test since Mr. Rashbaum was hooked up, Your Honor, before we get going here. That's an excellent idea. <laughs> Right. Mr. Adelson, is it doctor? It is, yes. All right, doctor, have you ever heard the saying that the simplest explanation is always the most likely? Have you heard I've, that? I've heard that theory before, yeah. Was your explanation to the jury over the last little over a day 
the simplest explanation? It was the truth. Do you, I mean, you have a thorough explanation. Would you agree with that? I told you what happened. Do you agree that the only problem with having an explanation for everything is that there's just so many explanations? There's no explanation. I explained what happened. I want to go through some of that. You claim that you were extorted on July 18, 2014 by mm -hmm. Catherine Magbano and also in the background some Latin kings, probably Garcia and Rivera, right? Is that mm -hmm. accurate? No, I wasn't extorted by Catherine Magbano. You weren't? Not, okay, not, that's not what I believed in 2014. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I understood you to say you believe that today. Today I do, yes. All right, so who extorted you? I believe that it was Catherine Magbanya's friend that she ran her mouth to. Okay. And, and that's at the, at 2014. The, right, but as you sit here today, you think it's Magbanya, Garcia, and Rivera. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? No, that's not accurate. Okay. Who extorted you? As I sit here today, I believe that it was Catherine Magbanya, and I believe Sigfredo Garcia, but I don't know for sure. I, I was never there when she was ever talking to him, so I don't know if he was in on it with her or not. All right. At the time, though, you did not think she was guilty. You got that right. The time of the extortion. In 2014? Yes. Sir. Correct. Okay. Ex and then so exactly when you found out would be, I think you said, her trial. That I suspected that she was not telling me the truth and she was a part of it was in 2019. At her trial? Yes. All right, and so she was arrested in 2016, right? Yes. All right, so for three years she was in the Leon County Jail awaiting trial, yes? She was there. And you believed she was innocent? Yes. And you had this whole explanation to assist with exonerating her, right? I have the truth of what happened, yes. But you didn't offer the truth of what happened, did you? Nobody came came to me. I thought the truth would come out. Does I, someone have to come to you? I was told not to talk to Katie and not to talk to anybody about this case by counsel. Okay. So you... Strike that. On day one, which is... July 18, 2014, she is the only one that physically contacted you to conduct this extortion. Am I correct in that? Yes, you are. So you never actually had any contact with any Latin King? No. No phone calls? No phone calls. No texts? No. No letters? Well, in 2016, from you're talking about in 14, right? I'm talking about the first layer of the extortion. Did you have any contact with the thugs that were getting your money for two years? No. Did anybody put a gun to your head? I was told that I would be killed in 48 hours if I didn't pay up. I heard you say that, but yeah. my question is, did anyone put a gun to your head? Did you ask me, did anyone pull a gun on me? That's what is I that asked your you. question? No, 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 nobody pulled the firearm on me. All right, so when Catherine Madbanwa came to you on July 18th and said, open the safe and give me all your money, she was not armed. She was not carrying a gun that day, and no. Were you armed at that time? Did you have a weapon in your home? I had weapons in my safe, yes. Were, the, were you led to believe or told that the bad guys are outside, right outside your apartment or your residence? No, but I was led to believe what they did to Dan they were going to do to me. I heard you say that, but my question is, did she say, like, the car's running, I'm going to take the money out there to him right now? No, she never told me that they were in, waiting for me outside my house. In fact, she stayed the night with you, didn't she? Yes, she did. And didn't exit your house with your $138,000 until the next day, right? Correct. <clears throat> and the money, the $138,000, was that stapled into $1,000 increments? Each packet was a thousand dollars, and they were had a staple in it. And stapling money is a little unusual. Would you agree with that? It's, for me, it wasn't unusual. That's what I did. Right, but 
nobody else does it. That's why I'm suggesting it's unusual. I've, I've never questioned people into how they keep their money, whether they keep it in a staple or a paper clip or an envelope. I just know what I do. Would you agree, doctor, that it's a compelling piece of evidence that the killers were paid in stapled money and came up with that information in this case? It's, it's not compelling. The, the people who extorted me and got my money got it from my house, and it was stapled at my house. They had to have gotten it from you, right? Because it was stapled. If they got it from Katie, they got it from me. So it had to be some kind of, I paid, but I did it under duress based on that piece of evidence, right? That had to be built into your defense. I was extorted and I paid the money. All right, so K Katie comes in and she she's in a panic and she tells you what's happened. And I'm, I, need, I need all the money in your safe right now. Do you suspect that maybe she's working with the police at that point? Maybe she's trying to set you up? No, she, she didn't say, I, I need all the money in your safe. That's not what she said. Did she take all the money in your safe? I, I cleaned out all the money in my safe and handed it to her. Right. Why did you do that? Because I was being extorted for a third of a million dollars. But why didn't you? The bump was only $5,000, and you immediately became suspicious and questioning and had all these conversations and deliberations about what to do about it for days. When Katie comes to you, you just open the safe and give her the money, right? I, that's what I did, and there's a big difference between the two. Okay, well, the way that it was done to you, is that the way it's done? You, you have to be more specific. Please. Well, on the wire, you say repeatedly, that's not the way it's done. You knew that the undercover agent was law enforcement, or at least strongly suspected, because that's not the way it's done. And my question to you is, since you're an expert on extortion, because you've been extorted before and that's how you knew that's not the way it's done, is this the way it's done? Do extortionists send a girlfriend of their victim to collect their extortion money? Is that the way it's done, doctor? I'm telling you what happened to me. And I was told that if I didn't pay in 48 hours, I would be killed. The person that came and extorted my mom the, was not the same approach as what happened to me. Is that the only way? That's the only way it's done? They send the girlfriend? It's the only time I've ever been extorted like that. Okay. And did you hear any of the negotiate? So they come in and they say, strike. They come in and they say, we need a third of a million dollars? You need to pay a third of a million dollars. You need to pay a third of a million dollars. Why not a million dollars? Because when I had told to Katie that the million dollar offer for Dan Markell, I said I was going to pay a third of a million. And I, when she asked me, do you, you have that much money? And I said, yeah, I could pay it in cash. So she took it as I had cash, and she knew I had a ton of cash in my safe. So she thought I had the cash. I didn't have all that cash. So that's where I'm assuming they got the third of a million dollars from. But the, the offer that she bragged about was a million dollar offer, isn't that right? That she ran her mouth about. I was never there when she spoke to her friend. Okay, was it a million dollar offer? The offer was that a million dollars was going to be paid and I was going to pay a third of a million. And weren't you going to cover Wendy's third as well? No, not at all. I was going to cover my third. Didn't your lawyer say in opening statement that you were going to cover the whole thing or Wendy's third? No, I, I was sitting here. I, I heard what he said. Charlie was going to pay a third of a million dollars. All right. And so the offer was a million dollar offer, and that's what you told Katie along with the fact that you were going to cover the third. I was telling her that I was going to pay a third of a million dollars, yeah. And then one day if my sister was able to, she was going to pay me back. And then you didn't have the amount of money that was being demanded at the time. Right? No, I, I only had what I had. All right. And at that point, the blackmailer, Catherine Magbanawa, negotiates some type of layaway plan for you to complete the extortion with the, the Latin kings. Okay. Katie wasn't the blackmailer, and Katie wasn't the one who was extorting me. Didn't you just tell this jury that Katie was the blackmailer? You realized it in 2019. I had thought that you, when you were just talking, you were talking about 2014. 
you were talking about that night. Okay. So yeah, that's night happened Doctor. in 2014. Okay. We all know now, because you have revealed the puzzle piece, she's a blackmailer. Can we agree on that? I believe sitting here in 2023 yes. that she was in on the extortion for yes. sure. Yes. So is it okay if I refer to her as a blackmailer? I think there's a difference between blackmail and extortion, but yeah, okay. at sitting here today we can. Sure. We'll, ex we'll refer to her as an extortionist. So this, this woman, <coughs> the extortionist, is going to do you a solid by negotiating with the Latin Kings for you to get on a payment plan for the extortion. Isn't that what happened? What you're doing is you're taking what we know in 2003 and trying to say, this is what I knew in 2014. There's Did she put you on a payment plan? Yes, she's, she said, because I didn't have the money, she said, ask me if I could pay $3,000 a month in 2014, and I said, yes, I can. Did you hear any of the conversation where she was making these negotiations on your behalf? No, when she said, I'm gonna go check with my friend and if that's okay with him, she took her purse, took her keys, took her cell phone, she walked out of my front door, closed the door behind her, and I sat in my living room and she came back about five minutes later. You didn't wanna to talk to the guy yourself? No, I didn't even think of that. I mean, but she went outside to call him. All right, and then the two of you took a Xanax and went to sleep. Well, I, I took a Xanax. I don't know if she took one out of the bottle, but I, I definitely did. And the next morning, she left with your money, right? She left about 8.30 the next morning. That's July 19th, 2014? Correct. Let's talk about what you did that day. You did not report this to the police because you were in fear, correct? Absolutely. And you didn't report this to Wendy, even though, according to you, her life was in danger, too, correct? Potentially, but I, I planned on paying the extortion every month. All right. And, but you did go to the gym that morning, right? Can we show that text, please? Did you, were you able to go to the gym the next I, I absolutely didn't leave the house. I, I worked it out at Nova Southeastern Gym, and you can check the gym records. I was never there. Okay. Did you say you were going to the gym? I said I was, yeah. But you didn't actually go? No, I didn't leave the house. All right. So would you agree, Doctor, and we'll refresh your memory with them if we can, that the text messages that were exchanged between yourself and Catherine McVanawa on the morning after this exchange of money were inconsistent with your extortion theory. They were inconsistent with how I was feeling. They don't appear to look like you just gave her $138,000 under duress, do they? She told me, to. the last thing she said to me before she left the house is, can we just pretend like this never even happened? So when I sent her that message, I was trying to show her like, I'm trying to block, I'm forget, trying to forget all about it. Yeah, you were just demonstrating to her that you would agree to pretend nothing happened, right? Absolutely, that's what she asked me to do and that's what I tried to do. All right. So the text messages aren't what they appear to be. It's a beautiful day, I'm going to the pool, I'm going to the beach, I'm going to the gym. None of that is what it appears to be. It's something else. I absolutely did not go to the gym. I was trying to show her that I was, you know, pretending like nothing ever happened and looking past it. And there's but nothing on the wire. All oh, those hours of you talking. <clears throat> there is nothing on the wire about the extortion, this layer one of extortion, because she told you not to talk about it, right? She told me to never talk about anything to anyone or her, she never wanted to hear about it again. Yesterday, in your testimony, between you and your attorney, you mentioned the word extortion 123 times. Would you take my word for that? I'm sure it came up a lot. Okay. But nowhere, even in the midst of this whole second extortion, it's happening again. It's an extension of the same thing. Do you mention anything about this layer one of the extortion? Do you? Yes, actually, I did. Okay. Um, if you pull up the video from Matsuri when I was sitting with my dad, and I mm -hmm. said, and the funny thing is, that's what I whispered in his ear. 
Right, but we can't hear that. Right, because that's my point. I never wanted anybody to hear what had happened. I never right. wanted the police to come talk to me. But if you put up that video, you'll actually see me saying that it's my dad's ear, and that's why I went in and said it. And that's what we were talking about at the time. So at at Surrey, oh. the only time you mention the extortion, it's in a whisper that is not picked up by the microphones, right? Intentionally, yes. Yes. And, and, and that was intentional at the time, but it sucks for your defense, right? Because that would be a huge piece of evidence for you to show this jury, wouldn't it? No, I, th I think you'd, you'd come up with a reason why uh, that I said it anyway. And, and there's nobody to corroborate this testimony? There is. Okay. And the Matt Surrey, you talked about it again out in the parking lot, right? Wasn't that your testimony? Yes, we, we spoke in the parking lot. Okay, so you did talk about the extortion. That's you just right. didn't do it in a way that it was captured on any of the recordings in this case. Well, we, sp we spoke when we had privacy. Well, you had privacy on the phone, right? What, when? At least you thought you had privacy on the phone all, every time when you were talking on the phone for no, hundreds of hours on the no, wire. No, there's, there's always a chance that I was being listened to. Okay. I mean, I'm, well, there was a chance you were being listened to when you whispered in Dad's ear, right? But you said it, and you were talking well, about I, it. I, whisp I whispered real quietly into his ear, so I, I thought I had privacy. <gasps> at, that, at that point, I thought I had privacy. And Catherine McVanawa and you discussed this first layer of extortion in the car outside of Dolce Vita, too, right? That's that's when I found out everything that was going on, and she she opened up when I. But if her. this jury could hear that conversation recorded, we would all be hearing basically what you're telling us, that there was an extortion effort that predated the undercover operation. Wouldn't right. we? Because I was trying to see if Sigfredo was behind the extortion of my mom because I knew he was behind. I had a fe always had a feeling he was behind what happened to me, and she was having this explosive fight with him, and it was going on the same exact time that my mom started getting extorted, so... I thought that he was going after my mom. Don't you wish that that conversation in the car had been recorded? Um, I don't know. Wouldn't it yeah. prove your theory? Could yeah. You, I mean, you're talking about the prior think about extortion. It, then, then you'd know exactly what happened back then. But unfortunately, it wasn't recorded, and then everything that was recorded inside the restaurant, you don't mention it, right? I'm speaking very carefully. I mean, I, and I was still, when, even when I was in the car with Katie, she was doing most of the talking. That was the first time she really opened up, and I think I caught her off guard. I was still, even when I spoke to her in the car, I was real careful. I said, was T behind, was T behind what happened to me? Like, I wouldn't even say the words to her when I was in the car. Okay, was T behind what happened to me? Do you say anything anywhere on the wire about referencing what happened to me? Meaning, what happened to me before? Um, no, because that was the only time I ever <laughs> confronted her. But I, I did, actually, when I, would, when I would be on the wire with my mom, and I would say, this is, it's not the same person. Like, that was in reference to what happened to me, and she what knew that. What call do you say it's not the same person? Uh, okay, you want to know what call? It was... Yeah. Tuesday, the 26th, um, and I, I said it's at the end of the call. It was a two-minute and something call. April 26th? April 26th, 2016. It was a two-minute and something call. It was towards the very end, and I go, I know it's not done like this. It's 48 hours, just enough time. It's not the same person. So you can look it up. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's not the same person you were referencing as the person that blackmailed me years ago and has been blackmailing me for years. Yeah. So that, that's what you meant. It's not the same person that's extorting me, correct. <laughs> All right. So I want to go back to Wendy. Wendy is in the process of relocating from Tallahassee to South Florida, basically the day that this is going on, day after the money drop, right? They're... they're Packing up the car, they're coming back. Yeah. Right. So she's going to be moving significantly closer to the killers that had threatened her life. This, this, what I don't, I don't. She wasn't planning a. It wasn't a permanent move or anything that was planned. I think she took a suitcase with her. 
But she's your family member, yes. She's much closer to the one they've already killed than you, right? She's say it again. She's much closer. She's got much deeper connections to the person they've already killed. That's Dan Markell than you do. Right. I mean, there's a reason to fear for her safety because these killers have come. They've just killed Dan, and now they're saying they're going to kill another one. It could be Wendy, right? She she has no idea what's going on. Exactly. But you let her move from Tallahassee to Miami where you knew the killers were located. That's my point. Do you agree with that? The, the killers were able to find Dan Markell in Tallahassee. They have a car. They were. But would you rather live in Tallahassee or in Miami if the killers are in Miami? I think if these people want to find you, they'll find you. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, looking at Luis Rivera, I don't think a, I don't think a distance would stop him. Okay. Where did Wendy and the boys live when she first moved to South Florida? Um, when she first moved to South Florida, she moved in with my parents into a small apartment. They actually had to get another apartment because that one was too small. With your parents? She moved in with them, yeah. And I want to talk about the cameras. You bought cameras for the Adelson Institute in, in your home at Whale Harbor, right? Yes. Yeah, the camera system, yeah. All right, and what about Wendy's? I guess she didn't have a place, so like wherever she was staying with your parents, were cameras installed there as well at that same time frame that you installed these cameras? No, I, I never told her what happened, but they lived in a very secure building. Isn't it true, Doctor, that you'd been planning to install those cameras for some time before the murder? I, I actually already had cameras at my house um, that I had installed in 2008. The technology from 2008 to 2014 it changed a lot when it came to cameras yeah. um, I my, think you my mentioned that I, I'm sorry to interrupt you but yeah. I think you mentioned all that on direct I'm referring to this particular update that was done post homicide you were in communication with this camera guy and I think your lawyer mentioned this you had 84 text messages with him dating back to January 20th of 2014 in regards to the update that occurred post murder, do you agree with that? I know. I know. There was always talk that we were going to get cameras in the office, and we just never got around to it. When this happened, um, that very, that week, within probably three days, I called the camera guy up and I said, "How I get cameras in my house and my new cameras for my house, and I want to get cameras in my office. How soon can you come out and do it?" And then he came out. I'd say four or five days after that, bought the equipment and installed it that week. Did you hire a private investigator to help you with this whole problem you were having? With the extortion? Yes. No, I didn't tell anybody. Did you get a bodyguard? No, I, I carried a gun on me and I would sleep with, the, sleep with a gun next to me in bed and I carried a gun on my person and had a gun in my car at all times. Do you recall a statement you made on the Dolce Vita recording that said you were gonna start carrying a gun. Yeah, because I, for a long time, I, after this happened, I was carrying a gun, and I, it's it's uncomfortable, and I don't always like carrying a gun. So I, I hadn't carried a gun in a while, and I was gonna start carrying one again. But you did say in 2016, I'm gonna start carrying one. Yeah, I, I carried probably for about four to six months after this happened, and. Uh, and I wear scrubs, so the, the gun that I had c can kind of stick out, and it's uncomfortable. I, I prefer not to carry a gun. So you quit carrying it but w during the time you were still paying the extortion money? Yes. All right, and the extortion money that you were paying, $3,000 a month, that wasn't going towards the principal of whatever was left on the 333000 right? Didn't you testify to that? Correct. All right, so you never came up with the remaining bulk of the money that you owed never and nobody ever came after you for that no they said you could pay it all off and it'll be done or just pay you pay three thousand a month so I, I thought about paying the full amount all right then a couple weeks later after the initial extortion you and Catherine Magbanoa broke up according to your direct Did I have that right that's not correct oh, when did you break up uh, within a week, I, I met her, we went out to dinner, we went out to eat, and I, we, I just said, this has got to end. All right, and so I, we you broke done. up with her? 
Yes. Weren't you scared that if you broke up with her that she would sick the Latin kings on you? No, because I, I had every intention of paying every month. When, when I broke up with her and I said, listen, I don't want to surround myself with this. I'm scared. She said that she was going to come every month and pick up the money and protect me. And she, she understood. I mean, she, our relationship was on the rocks. Uh, but you've July, justified that all the gifts and stuff that you gave her were to keep her happy, right? Yeah, when I, when I realized that she's the one who's protecting me and she wasn't a part of this extortion, I had no problem keeping her happy and I looked for things to do, nice things to do for her because she was broke. But not worried about pissing her off by breaking up with her. Well, she, our relationship was definitely on the rocks. Uh, after July 1st, when Sigfredo cut me off and threatened me and called my dad, and then she knew I didn't even invite her to my dad's birthday party, which was a family gathering with family friends on July 5th, um, she knew we were pretty much we were going to be done. After you broke up with Catherine Magdanawa a week after the murder, did you continue to talk to her? We, we still communicated, for sure. Talk on the phone? And texted, yeah. And meet up? No, the only time I would see her was I saw her again the end of August. She came and picked up the money, and that's when she asked me if I could put her on the books because none of this money was going to her and she was needed to get health insurance for her kids. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it and help you out. And did you continue to hook up with her after the breakup? And by that I mean, you know, have sex with her. There was one occasion. There was one time that we hooked up. Okay, when was that? that? Was, I want to say it was probably about five months after we'd broken up. Okay, well there was one other occasion before that in October of 2014. Um, do you recall that? October 9th of 2014? That's, that's probably the occasion I'm talking about because July... Let me count the months, July, August, September, October. So, okay, so four months. I mean, okay, it's been and then there's another years. one on October 15th. You remember that one? No, I, I think I just, I think we did hook up about one time. Okay, well, one time on October 9th and one time on October 15th. I thought it was one time. If it, if it was two times, it's been. Could it years. have been two times? No, but no more. Okay. And on August 25th, 5th, 14, that would have been after the breakup, right? Yeah. You text her, and then she replies, I don't need help, I'm good. Don't need favors, nor will I trust anyone again. Erase my number, please. Go on with your life like you did already and have been doing. Sorry we spoke today, I don't want to stress your life more. Don't do anything for me. Do you remember receiving that text from Catherine Magbanoa? Yeah, sounds familiar. And that's a pretty weird text to get from the extortionist. You're meeting her to give her money. Why is she saying erase my number? She's not the extortionist. Okay. On that, in, in, 2000, see, you're, in 2014, mm -hmm. I didn't think she was the extortionist. Right, but it's been revealed that she was. Uh, in 2019. So you're taking what was known in 2019... And you're trying to say I knew what I knew in I'm not trying to say you knew. I'm trying to say <coughs> she knew. She knew she was the extortionist. Why is she telling you to erase her number and leave her alone? Because I broke up with her. Exactly. On 9-14, or 9-11 of 14, she sends you hashtag bestie for life. Do you remember that? It sounds familiar. So did you all have some kind of reconciliation after the breakup? No, I, I was probably doing a favor and making her happy with something. She On 10-6 of 2014, I love you. It makes me feel good that you care about me. I'm lucky to have you as part of my life. Do you remember sending that to her? Yeah. On 10-9 of 14, I mentioned the sex talk. I won't go into the details of it. Again, 10-15, more sex talk. 1023 of 14. Thank you again for everything you're doing for my mommy. She sends you that. What were you doing for her mother? I don't know. I think I was going to... I did a consult for her, but I didn't do anything for her mom. 224 of 15. 
You agree that she always knows how to make you smile, and you say I love you to her. Remember that? Yeah, I, I cared a lot about Katie, and I didn't think that she was a part of this. So I, I was always trying to keep her happy and make her happy, and I felt like she got caught up, dragged into something that she shouldn't have been dragged into. Okay, maybe, but she dragged you into it as well. I, I didn't see it like that at all. And our relationship actually got stronger. You know, initially when I got extorted, I had limited contact with her and I was cold to her. And then over time, I realized that she's the one who's protecting me and she's not involved with these people because the extortion never went up and Katie was always broke. So she was involved with them because she was had a child with the guy, right? I didn't know for sure it was him. But, but you suspected always that it was him. I always suspected that Sigfredo was behind this. So yeah. wouldn't you want to distance yourself from this woman who, I mean, were you ever really that serious about her to begin with? Um, I mean, we, we spent seven, eight months together. But, but you were never considering marrying her. No, I wasn't considering I mean, her. you were a playboy, right? You had a zillion girlfriends. That's, that is actually not even true. Okay. Did you have a lot of girlfriends? I had two girlfriends in the two or three years after her. I dated, mm. I dated Whitney Kick for nine months. Okay, but how many women were you talking to and engaging with sexually? A lot more than Whitney Kick, right? There, there could have been one or two. Or more? No. Okay. Point being, you were not going to marry Catherine Magbanwa. I wasn't having marriage plans, no. Okay. And you have now broken up with her after this incident. Yes. She's the person that's taking the money from you physically. She's the one. I looked at it. She's the one who's protecting me. If, if she wasn't, I was going to get a visit. Is from she somebody. the one that was physically taking the money? Yes. Is she the one that was connected to the person you suspected to have killed your brother-in-law? I thought she was tied to that person, yes. And she's the one that got you into this, right? Because she ran her mouth, right? And I, I looked at it, that I ran my mouth, too. And if I never said anything to her, this would never have happened. So I, I felt responsible for saying something to her in the first place. But you didn't feel responsible enough to try to do anything about her sitting in jail, an innocent woman, for three years, did you? She never contacted me. You didn't offer to testify in her trial. You let her get convicted and get life in prison, didn't you? I, I thought the truth was going to come out. But not through you? I was never contacted. I thought it was going to come out through her. Was there any contact between your lawyers and her lawyers? You'd have to ask them. You said you didn't have any contact with her. I had, Did you have I had any contact? zero contact with her. So your lawyers didn't tell you anything on behalf of her lawyers? Absolutely not. And her lawyers didn't hear anything from your lawyers? I don't know what lawyers talk about, but I can tell you that I never talked to Katie, and I never told my lawyers. You never relayed a message through your lawyers that the Adelson family would not be talking in this case? Absolutely not. And she had nothing to worry about as far as that end was concerned? That's not true at all. Did you or your agent contact her brother to offer to assist with her attorney's fees in her case? That's a complete lie. On 1027 of 15, you say you can't wait to get lunch with her. She's the best, and you're lucky to have her as a friend for life. Did you say that? Yes. 1027 15, you can't wait to get lunch with her. 1030 15, you tell her you miss her. 12, 9 of 15, again, you tell her she's the best. Yeah, I said all those things. Do you agree that this picture does not look like a relationship between an extortionist and her victim? I, I agree, because Katie wasn't the extortionist. She was the extortionist. In 2014 and no, 2015, I didn't believe that. I know you didn't believe it, but we're looking back now, okay? You know, it's like if you're going to quote me, date me. Like, at what I knew in 2014 and what I knew in 2015 is not what I know now in 2023. Okay, yes, I hear you. You didn't know then, and that's why you were nice to her. Yeah, I thought she was protecting me. Got it. 
And none of those factors that I pointed out weighed into that consideration, that she ran her mouth, that she brought the Latin kings on you, she was taking the money from you. None of that counterbalanced it. You were still going to be friends with her and keep her happy. You're wrong. I, I didn't know about the Latin kings in 2014 or 2015. All right. The love text, which is what I'm referring to all these texts, where you're still nice to this person after you break up with her, you're still doing favors for this person after you break up with her, I mean, that's like a major problem for your defense, isn't it? No, our, our relationship got stronger. I agree, our relationship got stronger, but it was much different. Isn't that why she has to be an innocent conduit between you and the bad guys? Because if those texts didn't exist, she would be the extortionist and the bad actor in this whole thing, right? I'm not following your theory. You have to explain away those texts, don't you, Doctor? No, I have to sit here and tell you the truth. And now you're finding it out. Most people don't send kissy faces to people that are extorting money out of them. I mean, she was taking your money. Again, Ms. Kaplan, she was not extorting me at the time. That's not how it's done, is it? I'm telling you how it was done. So then over these next two years, you would meet her monthly and hand over a bundle of checks and $3,000 in cash, right? No, you're wrong. Okay, tell me. I would hand over $2,000 in cash and a bundle of checks. $2,000 in cash and a bundle of checks. And so over the course of two years, I'm terrible at math, but that's roughly s how much money? Because I did, I think I did $3,000. It's $48,000 in cash in addition to the 138 you provided the night of. Do you agree with that? If your math is correct, I'm just telling you what I paid her each month. And, and the checks, which is another $17,000, right? You're, you're doing the math. It was a lot of money. Was it a lot of money to you? It was a lot of money to me, yeah. I work hard. Did the, <coughs> did the extortionists, whoever they were, ever try to increase the payments or come for more money? The, the extortion never went up, and Katie was always broke. And that's what led me to think that she was not a part of this because she could have easily jacked up the the payments. Well, she's sharing three grand a month with a bunch of other people, right? At least one other person. I didn't think she was sharing it. Why is she coming to me for $300 for her kid's birthday? Because she's broke. Because she wasn't getting any of the because money. half of three grand doesn't do much when you're living in Miami with two kids to feed, right? I didn't and think she working. was sharing anything. Well, even if she was sharing it, that's your point. She must not have been taking the money because she was broke. And my point is, she could have been taking half the money and been broke. That's not how That's I not saw it. not a lot it. of money. That's not how I saw it. Tell me about Dan Markell a little bit. What you sort of said, what I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, was he was, you know, a nice enough guy, typical Wendy boyfriend, but not really your kind of guy. Yeah, I think it's an accurate description. Do you agree that he was this brilliant legal mind? I, mean, I think he was a, a little on the nerdy, nice guy. Um, just kind of like the average guy that my sister dated. Not the kind of guy you, you want to have a beer with, though. Um, we never had a beer together. I mean, not that I wouldn't have had a beer if he wanted to have one. We just didn't have that much in common, but he was always nice to me. Do you appreciate the fact that his death was a terrible loss to his sons? It was horrible. Do you think they were better off without him? Absolutely not. Did you host a celebration dinner after his murder? That's a complete lie. On the wire, would you agree that the Markell boys were in the background pretty much of every call you had with your mom? I mean, we hear them a lot, right? My, my sister was working, so my parents would help my sister out, yeah. Yeah, and it was summertime, so they were out of school, I would assume. I, I don't know if it was every call, but they, they definitely helped my sister out for sure. All right, and those calls captured Donna pushing them on the swings, that call that tortured all of us a couple times. Remember that one? Yeah, there was a call where she was pushing them on the swings. Taking them to tennis lessons. Yes. That, was, that was the same day. I mean, that was the same call that got broken up, and she called me back, but yes. 
doing their bedtime routine helping my sister out for sure reading stories brushing teeth getting haircuts going to piano story time and bedtime all of that kind of stuff yeah. all stuff that parents and grandparents do you're right all right she even said to you on one of the calls regarding the bedtime routine that quote we have a whole routine going do you remember that i think i mean i, I have a whole routine with my son i mean i think it's normal with the kids you have a routine to put them to bed right you all the brush kind of teeth. things can't forget to brush your teeth all the yeah well, dental humor couldn't hurt right what's that all the kind all the things that that you know your mom wouldn't have been able to do as readily if the kids were living in tallahassee agree with that i mean when they come up to visit them they'd be doing the same thing sure when they came up to visit but now they're doing it every day right almost not, every day not every day but when my sister needed them she helped them out and these are all things these little routine <coughs> things that dan markell will never be able to do with his sons you agree with that absolutely does your mom have a favorite child uh, she says she doesn't have favorites but i don't think she likes my older brother okay but is wendy the favorite um i'd like to think it's a tie between okay. me and her does your mom worry more about wendy than you mm. let's do I don't really get before this case no i don't i mean i don't I think maybe in different parts of my life, she's probably more concerned about me. Different parts of my sister's life, she may be more concerned about her. Is it true that your mom has a tendency to worry herself sick if there's something going on with one of you kids? No, nah, I mean, she's, she's a concerned mom, but I think she's a normal mom. Was she pretty worried about Wendy's marital problems? No. She wasn't? I think, no. I think she'd get upset when my sister would tell her, things that Danny was doing and going to work and bad mouthing her but I think mm -hmm. any parent would get upset but also she would meticulously go through all the filings and send long emails detailing her thoughts about every filing in this divorce no I don't I don't think that's the case at all okay did she hate Dan Markell um I think she liked him in the beginning for sure and I think when he was being a, a jerk to my sister I think that I don't think anyone particularly liked him when he was being a jerk what about the time around the time that he was killed did your mother hate dan markell no i think it had kind of like tapered off i think this it was only she only disliked him when he was being mean to my sister other than that nobody and, had a problem he with was that. being mean to your sister during these divorce proceedings and subsequent litigation right i think it was on and off i think it was sporadic and when your mom's worried about wendy does she come to you for solutions or to talk things out no, I don't think it was, I don't think worried is the right word to describe it. Does she ever make Wendy's problems your problems? No. Like convincing you to pull get Wendy to pull the plug on the house on Halloween 2013. Um didn't she convince you to sort of take up that cause? No, that was actually me. I thought I shared my thoughts on home ownership for my sister. That was all me. Then you say that if she had bought that house, that would have been the second worst decision of Wendy's life. I thought it was going to be a stupid decision to buy that house. And what would have, what was the first worst decision of Wendy's life? Oh, I thought when she, I mean, looking at hindsight 2020, I think when she, she agreed when she married Dan. And did you convince her to take a particular job as well? Remember that call? Um, yeah, she, uh, she got an offer from a law firm and she was debating whether or not she should take it she didn't know if it was exactly what she wanted to do and i was like hey you, you don't you don't know what you don't like doing until you've done it seems like a great opportunity like why not do it learn the job skill it's a skill you don't and she's like well i don't have that skill and i'm like well it's a good opportunity to learn it and you may like it and if you don't like it then try something else but i was trying to encourage her to to take what sounded like a great opportunity and mom shared your thoughts, and I'm referring to Donna Adelson, shared your thoughts about this opportunity being a good one for Wendy, right? Um, I, I probably heard about the job from my mom, but I definitely heard about it from my sister because I'm talking to my sister about it. Yeah, I mean, the job was not what she was had any experience in, right? It was a whole other field of law. Then that, that was my point. It was like, well, why not take it if they're offering it to you and you can learn something new it sounds like a great opportunity do you and donna know what's best for wendy better than she knows herself no but not at all 
Were you a spy when it came to Wendy? Did you get information from Donna, I mean, from Wendy and relay it to, to Donna? At times, because I was I was dating Bree, and Bree worked for Dave, so I would I would hear stuff about Dave from Bree, so I kind of had an inside, uh, I got inside information. In what capacity did Bree work for Dave? Dave was his, uh, after she graduated from college, she was uh, working as a nanny for Dave. All right, and how old was Bree during the time you were dating her? Was she significantly younger than you? Um, she was 24, and is, I was 39. Is that the, is Bree the mother of your child? She is the mother of my child, yeah. All right, so back to Wendy, Wendy and Donna. So Wendy, was she tight-lipped with Donna about her private life? Um, I don't think she shared everything. But she would tell things to you that she wouldn't tell to Donna. I'm, I can't say that for sure. <coughs> Can you play clip one, please? Publishing call E E E. <coughs> I'm sorry, what number? E E E. Please. yesterday since you were telling a story about Katie coming in from having had a, some kind of altercation with Garcia and she had reported that the necklace had been pulled off her neck. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. All right. And when you were relaying that story to the jury, you used a specific term describing what Garcia had done to her. Do you remember what that term was? It was only yesterday, but you'll have to refresh my memory how I described it. You said he roughed her up. That's accurate. And that put my antenna up because that roughed up, roughed them up, is the exact same phrase that Catherine Magbanoa said in her proffer that you used on Halloween 2013 when you first approached her about, does she know anyone who can rough someone up? 
No, I, th I think r getting roughed up is an adjective, but you're, you're, what you're doing is the same thing you did with your TV theory. Is like you heard TV mentioned multiple times, so you, you put the whole case together with the TV. Okay, we'll get to the TV. putting the whole case together with the word roughed up. Like, yeah, I mean, I I'm not putting so the whole case yeah, together. One moment. Don't speak over each other. But that's Please an Please wait for him to answer, then you can answer, ask your next question. Go ahead. But that's an unusual... I mean, you know, it's a specific term. I'm not making a whole case out of it, but did you say roughed up in both places? Um, Katie was roughed up by Sigfredo when he tore the necklace off of her neck, yes. And isn't that the same term you used when you first broached Catherine Magbanoa about couldn't, did she know someone who could rough up someone else? Never in my life have I ever asked her that question. Never in my life. That conversation never took place. Did you ever hear Donna Adelson refer to Dan Markell as stupid? Uh, no. Were you laughing when Wendy was on the stand and I read all the names that Donna referred to Dan Markell as? No, I, I laughed when you said the word fucker in court. Okay. What did she mean when she said Dan Markell was trying to take her sunshines away? Do you know? My mom never said that. Oh, so that you was, never that, heard that, was, her say that was made up, and he put it in a court filing, and then now it becomes something that my mom said because someone made it up and put it in a court filing. Did my mom you, never said that. Did your mom refer to the children as her sunshines? No, the, the kids were three and four. A three and four year old can't repeat a conversation and remember words six hours later and repeat it accurately. I have, I have a five year old son. Never seen a three and four year old do that. So it, it was made up, and now you're repeating it. Okay. Um, have you been a good brother to Wendy? I always try to be a good brother. It sounds like maybe you're not agreeing that this was a really nasty divorce, or are you agreeing it was a nasty divorce? I mean, I don't think any divorces can be pleasant, but I think they definitely had their fights. I mean, they were fighting over bicycles and all kinds of crap. But, but in addition to that, Dan Markell accused your sister of fraud, right? He made an accusation, yeah threatened her with federal kidnapping charges? Oh, that's a new one. You just told me. That one's in the emails that are in evidence. Did you review those? I didn't review the federal kidnapping charges in this case. Um, was seeking contempt proceedings. You heard about that here in court, yes? I heard about that, yeah. Even went after her lawyer personally, right? He, he made serious threats against her lawyer. And her bar card could have been je in jeopardy if any of those, or some of them... I, I heard yet the other day she was saying that I guess her lawyer, he was threatening her lawyer's bar card. Her lawyer's bar card as well as, as Wendy's. He, he was making lots of threats and writing lots of stuff, I guess. And he messed with your mom, too, didn't he, in that grandma motion? You know which one I'm talking about? I don't think he was messing with my mom. I mean, nobody took that seriously, and I don't think anyone even knew about it. Is it your later. mom? I'm sorry, finish. I said I don't think anyone even knew about it till years later. Isn't your mom notorious for always getting worked up about everything? She gets upset. I mean, she's a concerned mom. I mean, but, but is she notorious for getting really worked up about everything? Uh, to a certain extent. I mean, Aren't those your own words from Call S that's in uh, evidence in this case? Yeah, those, those are my words, but you, can, <laughs> you can't, on a, not to an extreme, but she does worry, especially when like Latin King gang members are extorting her for money. Did your mom take the grandma motion seriously? I don't think she even knew about it. She didn't talk to you about it? No. I didn't find out about it until years later. Wasn't this divorce a big deal in your family? Um, it didn't affect my life, I can tell you that. So I, I don't think that's true. I think it was a big deal in my sister's life. Why did Wendy testify that she was getting along well with Dan Markell just prior to his death? Can you can we agree that's not true? I think there were there were ups and downs in how they got along. I mean, you got to ask her. She was on the stand. I mean, I wasn't living her life. Is it part of your defense to minimize how nasty and contentious this divorce was? Um, my defense is to tell the truth. Did you have any input on the decision to change the boys' names from Markel to Adelson? 
absolutely not. Do you and Donna have to protect Wendy? No. Does Wendy appreciate everything you and Donna do for her? You got you got to ask her. I mean, she's my sister. I love her. I try to give her my best advice I can. If I I care about her, and I give her my advice, whether she takes it or not, is uh, is up to her. She's me, a, she's a grown woman. Let me ask it another way. Do you feel, or isn't it true that you don't feel? that Wendy appreciates everything you and Donna do for her. My sister had no idea what I've been through in the last, God knows how many years, and what I, I wake up worrying, am I gonna get killed? Am I gonna get arrested? And she knows none of it. She's just going around her life, and I had an, somewhat of an innate anger towards her. Mm -hmm. You know, probably unjust, because she didn't know what happened. But yeah, I, I was upset. And weren't you saying on the wire that you that she doesn't appreciate what you and Donna have done for her? She, I, I don't know if I said that she doesn't appreciate what I've done for her because I never did anything for her. Okay, so that give, was my next question. What, what have you done for her? Nothing? Other than give her advice and care about her, be a big brother that loves her. Like, Would you say Wendy's a little bit spoiled? Um, in, some, in some regards, I mean, she gets a lot of help for sure. Is she a little less savvy about how the world works than you are? I don't know. I mean, you got to ask her. Could you trust Wendy with a secret that could ruin your life? It's not a, it's not a secret. It's something that would get me killed, so I, I didn't want to tell her. Can we agree that she obviously knew something about this crime? She found out when she came to court. I, n I never told her anything. I'm talking about the murder of Dan Markell. She knew something. Right? I mean, it's not a coincidence she went to the crime scene, is it? The, you're talking about the route that she took that day? I'm talking about her pulling up to the crime scene tape. She never, she never went to the crime scene. She was going to buy a bottle of liquor that, coincidentally, the person sent her a stock the bar party for buy a bottle of bullet bourbon that she was going to pick up. She wasn't driving to a crime scene. And I think she made that clear, too. Nobody knew a murder was taking place. She pulled up to the crime scene tape, Dr. Adelson. She didn't pull up to the crime scene tape. She was driving down the street and then had to make a U-turn. It was blocked off. But she it's wasn't like going to. she couldn't to. help herself. Nobody it? knew a murder was going to take place. She exposed you all to some degree by those actions, didn't she? No. Not at and all. And then she threw you under the bus in her interview, didn't she? That nobody knew a murder was going to take place. She knew her husband had just been shot, and they were asking her who would want him dead, and she said your name. Are you mad about that? No, she said a lot of people's names. Well, she Not said yours in the first 25 pages of a five-hour interview. Isn't that true? I, I wasn't there for the interview. But you've reviewed it in preparation for your trial, haven't you? I actually don't know if I've seen her interview. There was a lot of questions of you about, you know, didn't you do this murder with Wendy? Doesn't the state think you did this murder with Wendy? Have you, are you familiar with your charges in this case? Um, yes, I'm very familiar with my charges. Right. And, and who are you alleged to have done this murder with? Uh, I'm alleged to have done this murder with my sister, my mom, and my dad. Would it refresh your recollection to review a copy of the indictment in this case? I'm a slow reader, but I could read it if you want. May I approach your honor? Okay. And this is the official charging document in your case, Dr. Adelson. What does it say in reference to who you are alleged to have committed the murder with? This is, what today is this? 2022. Oh, they, th they think I did a murder with Katie. Catherine McBanawa. Yes. Anybody else? Uh, give me a minute, I'll read. Uh, they got Luis Rivera in here. They got Sigfredo Garcia. As being alleged to have committed the murder with you? I read it too quick. Time. 
should just be at the very top of each charge. On or about July 18th, 2014, did unlawfully. Okay. Yeah, Katie. Okay. okay. Are you mad that Wendy hasn't been charged and you have? No, I'm mad that I got charged for a crime that I didn't commit. Do you have any innate anger with Wendy over that fact? No, not at all. Are you pissed that she told all that stuff to Jeff Lacoste? I don't think she said that to Jeff, but I wasn't there. How did Lacoste know about the celebration dinner? That we went out to dinner? She got sick, so she may have told someone that she threw up. And then what, he just added the part about... You referring to it as a celebration? I, I never referred to it as a celebration dinner. I, I picked my sister up. I said, where do you want to go to eat? She said she wanted pizza or sushi. I said, I know a great sushi place. We went there. We didn't have reservations. We ended up sitting at the bar for an hour waiting for our table. She had two drinks and got sick. She vomited on the dinner table or at the dinner table. Yeah, she got her to the bathroom. But yeah, she, she doesn't drink alcohol. So those two drinks, and I think on an empty stomach, I think she got really sick. But there was there was no celebration dinner. It was the first time that she actually really left the house since she got back, got back from Tallahassee. She was devastated. Did you say something to her about the murder of Dan Markell right before she vomited? Absolutely not. Do you remember what you said right before she vomited? Uh, she was probably, I think she said, I don't feel well. And I say, oh, no, and then she threw up. Before that? No, I think I said, oh, no, and then she threw up. Before she announced that she was going to be ill. Right. Do you remember what the conversation was? Um, just a, you know, how's the food? How's your, I mean, we were probably about halfway through dinner. We, if you look at the timetable, we weren't there long. Why did you brag to Jeffrey Lacoste about your connection to the Cuban criminal element? Never said that to Jeff Lacoste. So he's he's making that up. If he said it, I never I never said it. Well, you were in here when he said it, weren't you? I I heard him say it, yeah. But I never said that to him. On one of these calls, and it's in the context of talking about Dave and Wendy's relationship with Dave, you tell your mom that you've already gone above and beyond for Wendy. Was that a reference to having her ex murdered? No, it's me getting tired of this Dave stuff. I mean, Dave's a great guy. I mean, everyone who meets him likes him. He's not only super successful, but he's very low-key, like T-shirts and jeans kind of guy. And he loved my sister's kids. I mean, if you, if you listen to The Wire... The point I was making is not how successful it is. The point I was making is that my, my nephews farted on him, and he thought it was funny and didn't bother him. And he also has three young kids, the same ages as my sister's two young kids. They actually met in line when my sister was registering the kids for school. And it was very, they've been friends for years. So I thought it was a, a great opportunity for my sister to have a great guy in her life. Um, and I was getting sick and tired of, of Dave calls. And the wires started in April. My sister's birthday's in April, Dave's birthday's in April, so you got a ton of Dave chatter on this case. But believe me, I, I'd go crazy if I was talking about Dave like this all year long. One so that's a no? You did not reference having her ex murdered? Absolutely not. When you said no. you've already gone above and beyond? No, that was you. me getting sick of dealing with the Dave stuff. As great of a guy as he is, <laughs> I, I was still getting sick of it. When the... One million dollar offer was conceived. Do you recall whose idea that was? Um, my parents. Why was the relocation worth a million bucks? Well, it was. It was actually. Gonna, I was going to pay a third, so I, I only looked at it as that way. Um, why was it worth it? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Because it was going to help my sister out, and it was going to be a. It was going to give her a good opportunity for a good job down here, and she was going to be around family, and family's important, so that's why. Isn't it true that financially you came out ahead on this deal as opposed to if you had coughed up the third of the million-dollar offer? 
how in the world did I come up ahead? This is the crazy Financially, thing. you paid 138000 and you paid 2000 a month plus the $1,000 payroll amount. You're still about over $100,000 ahead financially than if you had coughed up the 333k. No, I would have been better off paying. First of all, I never paid for a murder. So this is a crazy question. But paying $3,000 a month for life is not a is not anything anybody wants to do. I didn't say anything about paying for a murder. I said you paid $138,000, which you did. I got extorted for 330,000. And then you paid but you didn't pay the three hundred thirty thousand. Right, because I, I didn't have it. I had that cleared out my safe, and that was what was in my safe that night. All right. Can we agree that Wendy was stressed out about the issues surrounding her divorce? I think the divorce caused stress in her life. Yes. And you were hearing about it from your mother, weren't you? Yeah, I, I would hear. Wendy's totally stressed out. Yesterday was a rough one. That sort of thing. Yes, yeah, so like I said it before, is that my sister would tell my mom a story. I'd be sitting in the car driving. My mom would be talking to me and telling me the, the latest story of the day. And that's how the information, that's how I found out a lot. And then on 2 19 of 14, Donna texts you again to tread lightly with Wendy and refers to Dan Markell as an asshole and a fucker, right? Sorry. You made me laugh. Sorry. That's what um, I'm here for. Is that what happened? That text? Did my mom use a, a foul word to describe him? Yes, sir. Asshole and fucker, to be specific. Sorry. Um, she, she used a curse word, correct. Is that pretty strong language for your mom, or is that how she speaks? Um, I mean, it, it, it is pretty strong language, but I think in a... I mean, I've been called a lot worse, but... Um, I, I mean, it's, it's some, my, it, my mom used the curse word. She used the curse word. You just use curse <coughs> words too. So, was Wendy less stressed? Oh, I yeah. Was Wendy less stressed out once all this litigation was over? Um, no, she she was a million times more stressed out. <clears throat> was she better off financially? Um, there may have been some, but not not much. I don't think so. Was she able to stop paying her $800 an hour divorce lawyers? Um, yes. Did she get $2.7 million in benefits for her children plus $4,800 a month for the boys' benefit? No. As far as I know, <laughs> the, that money was in trust for, and it's controlled by Dan Markell's sister. So none of that money, you, you keep saying it like the money went to her. The money's in trust. For the yeah. kids, and it's and that money never went to her. Some of it went to her, and some of it was in trust for the kids, right? I I don't know the breakdown, but I know the the ninety something percent of what you're talking about is in trust, and it's in trust for the children. It's not for her benefit, right? It's for the benefit of the boys, but it has to come through her because they're children, right? Well, it, when it she has gets to, disbursements, right? It has to go through the executor of the trust. And, and my sister's not the executor of the trust. No, no sir. I, I'm not saying she is. When the executor of the trust disperses money for the benefit of the boys, it gets dispersed to Wendy, right? See, I, you know more than I know. Did you have trouble sleeping after the murder? After I was extorted, for sure. Did Katie text you on 12, 19 of 15? Sorry, we have problems sleeping and shit. We do have a lot of weight on our shoulders. Did she text me that? Did she text you that? I mean, I, she may have, but it sounds about right. Do you want to look at the text? I can look at it, sure. Exhibit and it's got a little box around it. Thanks. So. <laughs> and if 
that refreshes your recollection, the question is, did she send it? Yeah. I want to go over a little bit the, some of the payments or gifts that you gave to Catherine Magbanois. We've heard a lot about her being put on the payroll at the Adelson Institute, and, and she made this demand to you when you met her to give her the first extortion payment on the payment plan. Is that correct? She didn't make a demand. When I, when I gave her the $3,000 for her friend, she asked me if I could do her a favor and put her on payroll for 1000 a month so that she could get insurance for her kids. She was going to cash the check. And the money was still going to her friends, so that money wasn't going to her. She was getting insurance. For and her did kids you believe her that that she would give the money from the paychecks to the friend? I believe what she was saying to me. Yeah. Isn't it true that Catherine McBanawa actually asked you to place her on the payroll back in June, prior to this extortion effort? I don't know if I put her on payroll. She asked me if I could put her as something when I was dating or put her as something on the office so she could get insurance. But I, I never I never did. And that was in June. Yeah, I remember she'd asked me about it before, but I never I never did anything. In June, June 24th of 2014, she says, Baby, I'm going to need help on the employment info. I have to send to DCF for my kids' insurance. Also, if I have to end up moving later on, I need to show I'm working for you or else I won't be able to get an apartment. To which you respond, no problem. Remember that? Yeah, but I, w I wasn't thinking she was asking about payroll. I think she was asking just to say that she worked there as the we signed a letter saying that she was employed. But I, that doesn't say anything about writing checks to her. And that request was made in between the two trips that the killers made. That request, well, she asked me if I could do that for her while I was dating her, and I never even did it. And did she ask if you could do that in between the two trips that the killers made? I didn't know when they went up, but I, I found out later that they went up in, uh, in June. All right, so that e email would have been sent, or I'm sorry, it's a text. That text would have been sent prior to what you're calling is the first layer of the extortion. That text was sent to me while I was dating her, but I never... Prior to the first layer of extortion? The text was sent in June. Prior to the first layer of extortion? Before I was extorted, yeah. Before I broke up with her. And you say several times on the wire that she was cleaning at the office. Was she really cleaning? No, she never worked for us. She was doing some type of cleanup for you, wasn't she? No. What's the purpose of, of keeping Katie happy? Was she going to sick the, the Latin Kings on you if... You made her unhappy. She was she was protecting me. I, I didn't know what would happen, and she was keeping my mind. Like when that ex the extortion never went up, and I just assumed, I thought that she wasn't part of it, and she was protecting me. Usually, extortion goes up. It always always gets ratcheted up from what I've heard. What's the fear of not keeping her happy? Is what I'm trying to understand. Well, I, I could get killed, or the people who are extorting me could come rob me. And I didn't get killed. I didn't get robbed. The extortion never went up. I thought she was really protecting me. If that's the case, why not just, I mean, you're complying with everything they've asked you to do, right? I'm doing every, everything that was asked to do. and that I, yeah. So why reach out and say, hey, can I get you a trip to Key West to go with that extortion <coughs> money? I never said, can I get you a trip to Key West? You didn't say... You were trying to get them the owner's cottage. Maybe it's not in Key West. Trying to get them the owner's cottage because it's the nicest, $380 a night, the postcard in. Do you recall all those conversations? Oh, yeah, for sure. And that was, she'd actually asked me weeks before the bump 
um, because I had this connection at a place called the Moorings that I could get like a really great price at a really affordable price for how nice the place is. Um, and I said I was going to make some calls and help her out and, and get it. And then I ended up giving her three hundred dollars for the uh, when she picked up that bag at my house. I put three hundred dollars in it and I got her a hotel room. Is that a yes? You remember that conversation? Yeah, I do. And she didn't want the trip in the text messages. She's saying like. No thanks, and you're kind of forcing it down her throat. Do you agree with that? Yeah, because actually, it's funny. At, at that time, in the wire, I was trying to see if Katie and him were together or they weren't together. So that's why I kept asking, how, you know, or how are things? Are you guys okay? You know, because if they were fighting, it was making me think more and more that the reason she was avoiding me was because she found out that he was the one who was doing the second extortion again. So I was trying to figure out if it was him and if she was lying to me. And she, in this case, she says, I don't want to do anything. And you say, you know what, F that, you're going there. You're going to have a good time. For sure. I was trying to do nice things for her. And then you, did you pay for a trip or offer, I guess, offer to pay for a trip to Santo Domingo for Catherine Magbano and Sigfredo Garcia to visit his parents? I, I didn't know who she was going with, but I, I paid for, you're talking about airline tickets? Uh, yes. She yeah. I, she called me up. She had an emergency. Something happened. She booked tickets for the wrong date. I didn't. I had no idea who in the family she was going with, um, and she had no money. And I, I remember I was in Chicago. I was at a friend's wedding, and I took out my credit card and I gave her the credit card number and let her book tickets. I thought she was going with her kids. So is that a yes? You paid. For oh yeah, no, I, I remember that well. Now. So for go sure. quicker if we can just. I'm sorry. Answer right. the question. Okay. What, the objection? Argumentative. Overruled. Did you offer to buy Catherine Magvanoa and her mom a cruise? Yes, Kate, Katie had mentioned to me that she always wanted to be able to take her mom on a cruise. So I, I, did, I offered, but she never took me up on it. Did you call in prescriptions for Catherine Magvanoa? She was a patient of record of my office. Did you pay for a meal service for Catherine Magvanoa? Yeah, I did. Did you pay for car repairs for her? Yeah, she. all this stuff was making me think she was broke. So yes, you're right. Did you offer that she could use your Range Rover anytime? I said she could borrow the car, sure. Did she talk about getting a boat and you offered to help her get a boat? I never offered to help her get a boat. I offered to help her look for a boat. Did you pay for the breast augmentation? No. No part of the breast augmentation? Not at all. So when she's saying at the same time she's the day of the breast augmentation, can I just put it on the credit card? Is she referring? Can I just put it on your credit card? Is she referring to something else, some other expense? I have no idea what she's referring to, but I, I did not pay for her boo job. What about this birthday gift for Sigfredo Garcia? What was the bonsai tree in the bag? What was that all about? Oh, she had asked me, um, and it's on a wire. It's actually it's on 420 where she says, can you get me some Bud from Bud? My next-door neighbor's Bud, and she asked me if I could get some marijuana from my next-door neighbor for her. So that's what, um, when I said I have a bonsai tree for you, I was, she asked me and I got her a little bit of marijuana from my next-door neighbor for her. And you said, I don't know what a married man with <coughs> kids would want for his birthday, but you did your best. I, I did my best. I was being completely, by the way, I was, I was being completely sarcastic. I, never would get Sigfredo Garcia a present in my life. And you thought you hit it out of the park with the weed and the gift card. Did you say that? You, well, give me a little more context. The context is you don't know what a married man with kids would want for his birthday, but you did your best and you think you hit it out of the park. No, the, I was being completely sarcastic because she had asked me for that marijuana two weeks earlier and I gave it to her and then I was joking around when I gave it to her. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want him to think that I was hooking up with her, so I, I started to joke around about it. And then I was like, you know, maybe you can just tell him it was for me because I didn't want him to think that I'm hooking up with Katie, and that's why I gave it to her. Can we agree in general that it's important to maintain <clears throat> positive feelings between co-conspirators? If you're a co-conspirator with someone in a crime, you want to keep positive relationship with that person. Will you agree with that? I'm not a co-conspirator with her. Okay, I'm saying in general, can you agree in general that co-conspirators in a crime want to stay friendly with each other? I'm not a co-conspirator with her. All right, can't agree to that. 
If a co-conspirator develops a motive to harm another one, that could be bad, right? If a co-conspirator... Say it again. Say, you know, a husband and wife do a murder together. And then look, ten years later, you know, they've gotten away with it, but ten years later, they fall out. That could be a problem. Somebody might start talking, right? I was never part of a murder. Were these gifts, these things that you provided to Catherine Magbanawa and her mother and Sigfredo Garcia payment for the murder? Okay, I never got Sigfredo a gift in my life. The guy absolutely hates me. He wants to kill me. He stalked me. He extorted me. Like, that was being completely sarcastic, and sometimes I make some bad jokes. But that's even when I wrote he wanted to take me deep-sea fishing, I knew he wanted to kill me. Like, you have that text, too. I, April, I didn't think we were going deep sea fishing. On April 6th of 2015, did you receive a text from Catherine, Catherine Magbanawa that reads, next time don't be such a dick to someone who has done something for you? Yeah, she's, she's protecting me, and she's mad. she's mad at me over something. Are these gifts what it took to secure her silence for so long? No, abs absolutely not. I was never trying to get her silence. I, I was hoping she'd tell the truth. Was your dad's birthday in between the two trips that the killers took? Um, yeah, my dad's birthday is July 5th. And what birthday was that for him? Uh, it was his 70th birthday party. All right, so there's been a lot of talk about the texting between you and your mom about the birthday. And she texts you on March 4th of 2014 and says she can't talk now, but she'll call when she goes to the bathroom in Gainesville and has privacy. She tells you to erase that text after you read it. Why did she have you erase that text? Okay, I, if, you, if you look at the records, I never erased the text. But why did she ask you if you know? You may not know. Maybe she's afraid my dad's looking at her phone and would find out about the president. It, it made how? no sense to me. That's why I was like, I didn't erase anything. How is you erasing the text going to prevent her, your dad from seeing it on your mom's phone? Well, if my dad looked at my mom's phone, then he'd see the text and maybe know what she's planning for his birthday. You weren't with dad. She was with dad, just to clarify. Yeah, she was with my dad. And the text that she asked you to erase, that particular text didn't say anything about a birthday or paella. Can we agree on that? No, not, but I knew what it was about. All right. 20 minutes later, she texts again and asks something about dad's birthday. Do you remember that? Yeah, I know we were trying to plan a surprise cruise. That was the original idea. Okay, and the paella is mentioned elsewhere, not in this particular thread that we're talking about now. Yeah, we Was up. paella the big birthday gift? Yeah, I paid for the catering for the whole party. Okay. Then three months later on June 8th, just after midnight, you text her, quote, still working on Dad's birthday present. Was that in reference to the paella guy? Uh Possibly, or possibly what I was also getting was a present. I mean, it's been 10 years, so I don't know exactly what I got him 10 years ago on his birthday. And then at 1 a.m., I'm sorry, you weren't done? You no, know, or, or what I was thinking about getting him. And then at 1 a.m., Mom texts you back, I know you'll, and she, I think she was in Israel, so that might account for the time, but she texts you, quote, I know you'll come through for me. Is that what she said? That's what the text said, yeah. Can we agree the timing of these texts is consistent with being sent the day after the killers got home from their failed June murder trip? No, it's consistent with the few weeks before my dad's birthday and trying to figure out what we're going to get him. Why didn't you go to Dan's funeral? In, in Canada? Uh, I think there were some in Tallahassee and... Canada as well. I, I know there was but a did memorial. you go to either? There was a memorial service here. Um, I did didn't you go to that? No, I, I didn't attend. I, I knew what had happened to him, and there's no way I could have shown up. I would have been too upset. Mr. Dubin, your lawyer that was here, seems like a long time ago at jury selection, said you know people have different ways of grieving and that sort of thing. Were you were you grieving for the death of Dan Markell? I, I felt horrible about what happened, and I, I knew what happened. When and did I, you? I wasn't. I'm sorry. I wasn't. Clo I wasn't close to him. Um, but either way, I mean, I, I felt horrible about what happened. When did you find out exactly how he was killed? Meaning, like shot twice in the head. I found out. Um, it would have been the next morning. Is how I found out he got shot in the head. 
Do you agree that this was a first degree murder? Do I agree? Planned, oh, the, the, premeditated? The, the people who killed him planned on killing him, yeah. Do you think everyone involved should be convicted? I think everyone involved should be convicted. Even the person that hired the hit? I think anybody who played a role in it, but I wasn't a part of it. Do you regret that Dan Markell suffered for 14 <laughs> hours before he died? I feel horrible. He was supposed to die quickly, instantly, right? Are you asking me? If I am. No, he wasn't supposed to die at all. This was horrible what happened. Did it surprise you that the cops were able to identify the Prius? Did it surprise me? Yes. I'm not a cop. I don't I don't know what how cops investigate. Did it surprise you to learn that it's it's not a requirement of law to put the person at the scene of the crime to be guilty of a crime? Listen, I'm not a police detective. Was the police work in this case thorough? I'm sure, I'm sure the police did the best they could. Did you think that you had done everything properly such that you could never be detected or caught for this? I wasn't part of this murder at all. You have it wrong. Catherine Magvano has said that you think you're untouchable. Is that true, doctor? That's not true at all. Did your parents drop off money to you on the night of the murder? I never saw my parents there. You could look at our cell phones and you'll, you'll find that out, that we never saw each other. I did look at the cell phones, and what is on there is your mom texts you, quote, outside your house. And no, I, I mean, think, look, look at the tower information. I think you testified that that meant she was just passing by on the roadway. She was so. approaching by the area, yeah, to see if I was home. Right. And do you know what your response was to her text? Yeah, like 20 or 30 minutes later, I said 10 minutes. I'm 10 minutes out, is what you said. I think I said 10 minutes, but yeah, I'm not home. Doesn't that indicate you're going to meet them at your house in 10 minutes? No, I, I told, told her to let me know when you're going to be in the area. Was the money that Catherine Magbanoa got damp? I never gave her any money that was damp. I, the money I gave her came out of my safe. Was it damp? No, I, I took it out of my safe. I put it on the dresser. She put it in her purse. Why did Garcia and Rivera, or whoever did it, I guess I should say, why did whoever did it need to kill someone to extort you? You gotta, you gotta ask them. Well, why, why couldn't they just come put a gun to your head and say, give me all the money and you're safe? Thank God they didn't. Thank God they didn't? They, thank God they didn't. I would have gotten killed. If Garcia hated you, why would he drive to Tallahassee twice to kill someone you hated? He was, it sounds like he was part of the extortion or Katie put him up to it. Doesn't blackmail or extortion usually involve the extortionist having some kind of dirt on the victim? I know how this was done to me. I, I know what, I'm just telling you what happened to me. I don't, I'm not an expert in it. If they had come in and threatened to kill you, would you have given them the money in your safe? someone came and put a gun to my head and yeah I would have opened up my safe and I would give them the money I still don't get how killing Dan Markell advances the ball for them to extort money out of you do you yeah I have a theory they, they could extort me for life and I don't think they knew exactly how much I had in the safe they knew, she knew I had a lot of money in the safe but this mm -hmm. way I could get extorted for life and that's what happened and I was paying stuck paying three thousand dollars a month but you could have gotten extorted for life just by the threat of death by Latin King, couldn't you, Doctor? I mean, this this was more, this was as real of a threat as you get. I mean, these guys aren't messing around. <coughs> All right, you didn't report this after Garcia was arrested, did you? <coughs> did not report this after Garcia's arrest? No, not at all. Okay, you did keep paying Catherine Magbanoa after Garcia's arrest? No, I never saw her again. Did not report this after Magbanoa's arrest, correct? Correct. Did not testify in either of their trials, correct? Was, was never contacted <laughs> to, but yes. You were okay with the possibility of them getting away with killing Dan Markell. I thought the truth was going to come out in 2019. How? If the witness who knows something doesn't come forward. Katie knows what, knows what happens and knows I was extorted, and her trial was in 19, and I was expecting the truth to come out then. And, and instead, I found out that she was having this affair with him <laughs> on me, and she lied, and all this money was going to her. So if her defense had been, I was 
an innocent conduit to an extortion, you would have backed her up on that? If she would have come in and told the truth, and you, yeah, for sure. You would have heard the same story. Where is your family located now? You don't have to be specific, but is your mom and dad, are they still in South Florida? They, yeah, they still live in South Florida. Okay, what about Wendy and the boys? My parents live about 30, 35 minutes from my sister, and I used to live about 45 minutes from them. And ha are they okay, as far as you know, physically, today, as we sit here? Yes. And are you concerned that because you've told now on the Latin Kings that they're going to come kill your whole family? I mean, I, I just told you that I knew that was told then that Luis Rivera, the head of the Latin Kings, killed Dan Markell. So, I mean, I do have some concern when I get out. Right, but even after, after me. Sorry, go ahead. I, it's okay. I said I do have some concern with Latin Kings now that I spoke and told what I know. But what about, I mean, Rivera was already in custody at one point, as well as Garcia and my band. Well, my understanding is your continued <clears throat> fear was due to other Latin Kings, potentially. Is that accurate? These are highly connected people. Luis Rivera, the head of the Latin Kings, in custody means absolutely nothing. If you think he can't send somebody from the outside, you're wrong. All right. So my question to you is, did that happen? Because you told last, you told yesterday. Was I killed yesterday when I was in jail? No. And nobody in your family has been killed so far? You're talking about in the last 24 hours? Right. Not that I know. Okay. But, but you're worried about that? I think now that I've spoken, I mm -hmm. do have a concern, yes. Okay. But not too concerned to remain silent when it's your own butt on the line, right? I'm, I'm here to tell the truth. And uh, yes, do I have a concern now that I told you what happened? Absolutely. Mom tells you on that first wire call that the bump involves the two of us, referring to yourself and your mom, right? Yes, that's what she said. She said. And would you agree prior to your explanation, that that looks pretty incriminating. I think if you don't know what happened, you can assume the worst. Isn't it true that you had to add the bit about confiding your extortion in your mom in order to put that toothpaste back in the tube? No, that's what happened when I because got the checks. Otherwise, why would you bring your mom into this? I didn't want to. When I first told her on the phone and asked her to write the checks, I told her, I said just it's a long story, I brushed it off and she didn't press anything, but I think she was out somewhere. It wasn't until when I picked up the checks that she started pressuring me and saying this makes no sense, why are you doing this, you're not dating Katie, and that's when she found out. But your mom is the most high strung out of the whole group, right? And she's old and she worries, right? I, I don't think she's super high strung, but she does worry about her kids. You don't? No. You've never met her. Well, you said she was, quote, notorious for making a big deal out of everything. I mean, she, she overreacts, but she's a mom. I think a lot of moms overreact. Okay. You could have told her, you know, Katie's down on her luck, and I'm just going to be putting her on the payroll. I mean, you were making enough money, you could tell her to just write checks, couldn't you? Why'd you have to tell her it was an extortion from Latin King gang members? Well, okay, at that time I didn't know anything about the Latin Kings, but when I when I told her what happened, I was thinking that you know what it actually would be good if someone knows what happened in case I get killed, they at least know what direction to start looking in. So until that point, nobody even knew. So I just when she started questioning me and questioning me and questioning me, I just said, you know what, I'm going to tell you, but don't say a thing to Dad, don't say a thing to Wendy. You got to promise me. I didn't want her to ever talk about this again. And that's, that was the day that she found out, is when I got the checks. What she doesn't say on the wire is, it's happening again. I was approached by another extortionist today. Does she say that? No, she's talking very carefully. And you say carefully, but isn't carefully the same thing as code? No, they're two, two totally separate things. Do you know the difference? You weren't really giving her money for a TV, were you? giving her money for a TV. This TV is probably going to be about five. Okay. I need you to bring cash tonight. I wish she picked another object on planet Earth other than TV. But TV is code for absolutely nothing. There is no code in this case involving TV. And you keep circling and circling and circling TV. You're wrong. 
Is it a coincidence that the repair of the TV that you bought Wendy as a divorce gift because it was cheaper than hiring a hitman is your sister's alibi for the murder and then your mom brings up TV first call on the wire? It's, it's not an alibi for a murder. She had a broken TV. you got to ask Lincoln who threw the remote at the TV. Was it a coincidence? <laughs> is the TV thing a coincidence? That's what I hear you say. Oh, that, that the repairman was there that day? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, that is a coincidence for sure. There's a and couple all, of all coincidences the, in this case. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I said there's a couple of coincidences in this case. I mean, she had people... <laughs> send her an email to go buy a bottle of bullet bourbon for their stock the bar party and she was driving to a liquor store to buy a bottle of bullet bourbon on that day at that time and her friend sent the email and you have the email and evidence like is that a coincidence yeah coincidences happen and that you might not be the right katie talk that doesn't seem to really fit with your theory of the case, does it? What was your explanation for that? Why you kept saying you might not be the right Katie? I mean, she's definitely the right Katie, uh, right? Absolutely. She knew it was. I was implying it was her. I was just trying to say, I'm not setting you up, but I need your help. On call B, your mom, you call your mom back, and, and you say, you probe her a little bit, and ultimately you say, you think someone's trying to blackmail you? That's crazy. Why does it sound like this is something that's new and unfathomable to you at that moment? Well, because I, I wasn't even following what my mom was talking about on the first call. And on the second call, um, when she, she shocked me when she said that. And I'd been extorted before. And her saying to bring cash, mm -hmm. just everything just didn't sound right. Could we play clip four, please? This is from Dolce. Sorry, from what? Four from Dolce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they had any evidence, the first words out of your mouth on this clip, even if they had any evidence, no, strike, the quote is, if you say, if they had any evidence, we'd have already gone to the airport. And I know you already testified about this, but, but does an innocent person say, if they had any evidence? Right, Katie, Katie's saying it's the police, and I'm saying that we're innocent, they're not gonna have any evidence to show we were part of something. That we were part of. If we had any part of this, we'd be going to the airport right now. And I Isn't still it say true, the same doctor, thing. that they're not going to have any evidence because you were careful? No, because we weren't a part of this. You were smart. No, we weren't a part of this. You walled yourself off from the killers. I was sure they're not going to have evidence to show I did something I didn't do. So we're not running to the airport. And you're untouchable, right? No, we didn't do a murder. I wasn't part of a murder. There's no reason to run to the airport. In the next clip you're discussing what's going to happen if if this person that did the bump goes to the police and you're going through all these scenarios you know these possibilities wait if, if he goes to the police yeah the blackmailer goes to the police they're going to say where's the weapon and he's not going to know they're, he's just going to have hearsay basically someone told me they did it and it's not going to be enough to, to get the investigation anywhere why are you thinking through the possibility of the blackmailer going to the cops if the blackmailer doesn't have any dirt on you to take to the cops? I, I wasn't thinking about the blackmailer. What I was trying to say is I don't know anything about Sigfredo. I don't know anything about this crime. I was trying to tell her that I'm harmless. I don't have any knowledge of what went on. Like The last thing I wanted is that now that she's saying it's the police, is someone to come and kill me and think I'm some kind of loose end. So that's that, why I'm saying that. But that's not what you're saying. You're saying if this is a person that Luis Rivera ran his mouth to and they go to the police, it's going to be worth zero because they're not going to know anything other than, hey, my brother told me this. I don't know if I was saying someone who knows Luis Rivera. I was trying to make a point that I don't know anything. 
And then you suggest what they would have to do is get him to wear a wire and get the person to confess, and that's probably what this what this could be an effort to do, right? Well, they're, they're thinking that we were part of a murder, so that's this was the, the same thing I said before: is that this is their theory, so this is a police tactic, and it could be either a bad guy or the police, and this is this is how they're pursuing it. Exactly. So as long as you keep your mouth shut, you can get away with murder, right? No, not at all. Isn't that we what you told Ryan Fitzpatrick? No, Ryan Fitzpatrick is someone who stole over half a million dollars That's from me. That's not my question, sir. Sorry. Did you say that to Ryan Fitzpatrick? No, never. Never at all. Why do you go into so much detail about rental car examples? Let's start with strike that. Can you agree that the Prius... You knew that the police were looking for a Prius at the time you met at this Dolce Vita restaurant. I think it had been released at that time. All right, and you're, and you heard the recording. You're you're arguing. Let's play the clip. This is going to be clip. I think let's play seven and eight, please. Dolce. like you're saying even if they track down the Prius even if there's DNA or fingerprints in the Prius meaning like they can link someone to the Prius that's not going to be enough evidence to make any arrests in this case is that what you're saying no not, not at all what I'm, what I'm doing is um, restating you've answered my question can I, can I fit, give you an on redirect you'll have an opportunity well, I my yeah, question was, question. One moment. My question we're not was, just wildly arguing, Mr. Ho Mr. Adelson, please answer the question. Okay. Please I can just ask you a yes or no question. Please allow me to answer your question. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Okay, sure. Yourself out. What, what I was saying to Katie is that the information she had just told me in the car about Sigfredo not being there when the crime was committed, she told me that Sigfredo was on high on drugs at the hotel and that Luis had rented a car, and that he's the one who, who killed Dan. And I'm restating to her that I don't have any knowledge of what, of what went on, and that I, all I know is that Sigfredo wasn't even there when this happened. So that's what I'm restating to her. That Sigfredo can't be caught even if he's connected to the crime, Sigfredo, to the car? I know that Sigfredo wasn't the one who killed Dan. Okay. Wouldn't it be good for you? Because you know now that Sigfredo is the extortionist, right? She just told you that in the car? Sigfredo, yeah. Okay. And wouldn't it be good for you if the police investigation into the Prius led to the arrest of the killers slash extortionists? If they arrested the people that killed Dan? Yeah. I know the extortion would stop. 
I, if, as long as I kept my mouth shut, I'd be safe. Right. So why are you trying to argue to her that like the car is not going to lead anywhere? They're not going to be able to do anything with the car. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I, I know that Sinclair wasn't the one who killed him. Did you say on this recording if there's a if they're a bad guy, there's two ways of dealing with it. Go ahead and contact the police. They'll contact him, the blackmailer, and arrange a setup. Take him down and he'll proffer ten years and now tell us everything you know or else you're gonna serve ten years in prison. Next thing you know, this person is singing. He's calling out your name. My parents are gonna have to say, gonna have to tell the story of what happened. Singing about what? About the extortion? No, that's. I think you're reading it wrong. I know the audible is bad. What would are the, those? Are those the words? Yes, sir. What would the the extortionist? And now I'm referring to the one that contacted your mother. The Latin King extortion. Well, they're both Latin yeah. kings, right? The, the second extortion. What would they have to sing about? The second extortion would be singing and talking about the first extortion, where they learned their information from. Who cares? That doesn't have anything to do with you. Well, when, when they catch the first extortion, Katie's tied to them and I'm tied to Katie. They're going to come talk to us, and we're going to be in danger when we tell them what happened. So that's we were. I was saying if they catch the second, they're going to turn in on the first, and that's the same thing I said yesterday. You gave very precise instructions to Catherine McBanwa on what she was to say when she calls the phone number, right? Yeah, Did you do I, that? I, absolutely. And then you say, "quote You'd better kill him because he's going to be a big problem, and he knows you who you are. If he can't do it, I'll have someone else do it." Aren't you telling her that if Garcia can't handle this problem and kill whoever's behind this, you will have someone else do it? You're, you're reading it totally wrong. It's a yes or no question, sir. No, no, you're wrong. When Dan Markell's murder was taking too long to happen, didn't you tell Catherine Magbanawa that if she couldn't get it done, you would find someone else to do it? No, I've never said that either. <laughs> and then you say in the recording, I'm back to Dolce now, yeah, and when the, guess what, when the effing police show up and there's a doctor, there's an oral surgeon standing there with a dead gang member in his effing driveway, they're not going to come down too hard on me. So, you knew you'd be believed if you went to the police, right? Um, I, didn't, I didn't know I'd be believed, but I, I fear for my life. And then you say, so help me God, if they fuck with my family, it's going to be fucking Nazi shit. Because this will be done. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Katie, I don't care what I spend, okay? I swear to God. What is Nazi shit? That, that's an expression that Katie would use to describe someone that's going crazy. I think the Nazis were absolutely crazy people. So I'm saying I'm going to get somebody to go crazy on the guy that's trying to extort my mom for money. I'll pay someone to go threaten him and to scare him. I Nazis. was not talking about killing anybody. Will you say the word kill? Yes? No. Oh, when you're, when you're putting the words in my mouth, well, we can no, do that sir. sentence. Do you say the word kill? I'm talking about if Sigfredo's coming after you, he's such a dangerous guy, you'd have to kill him to stop him. That's the only thing you could do. Not talking about killing the extorter. I'm talking uh, uh, second extortion. Okay. I'm saying that if if Sigfredo's coming after you, the only thing that you could do is you'd have to kill him to stop it. I'm not talking about okay. killing anybody. I'm talking about that's the only way that you could stop Sigfredo from coming after you is you would have to kill him. And that's exactly what I said there. You're wrong. That's exactly what I said. All right. Thank you. Nazis kill, right? Isn't that like their primary objective? No, I think Nazis are insane, crazy people. That exterminate, right? That kill, yes, but they're but this they're crazy. And that's and she would that was an expression she would use, and that's when I, I used it to her. But basically, saying I'm going to have someone go crazy on this guy. I could have used the word crazy. I thought it was interchangeable. Isn't what you're doing here in this portion of the tape feeling her out? to make sure Garcia doesn't have any bad feelings toward you? 
I, when I said it, yeah, I thought he could have been behind the, the second extortion. I, I think I've said that before. And you go into like how your relationships didn't overlap, you never disrespected him, and you mentioned that you know, you don't think that they, I assume you mean the these other people, associates that have contacted your mom would want to mess with his connections. Right? You remember? But you're talking about the copycat extortion. Right. And then you ask if if he's too far removed or can he still make a call? Are you referring to Garcia in that? Yeah, exactly. So can Garcia make a call to try to figure out who this is? Can Garcia help stop the second extortion? Someone's doing a piggyback extortion on the first. That's exactly what I said. On the topic of conversation for Catherine Magbanawa, don't you say, I look for things to do, I show you, that's the difference. You don't ask me for shit. You said all those things, right? Absolutely. That's, that's proven. What I've been saying all along is that I didn't think she was part of this, so I was doing things to keep her happy from time to time. I, Ethan's birthday I brought up there. I gave her $300. I helped her out with the car when her car was broken, um, for sure. And then you say, listen, you giving somebody money is not an admission of any kind of guilt. Would paying the money have made her look guilty? That's, that's what she was saying to me. She said it's the police. You, you can't pay the police. They're going to think you were part of a murder, and they're going to arrest you. But if it was an extortionist, it could have created a monster, right? And if you don't pay the extortionist, you could get killed. So when these or you could guys... Keep getting extorted. I'm sorry, go I, ahead. I said if you don't pay the extortionist... You could get killed, or you could keep getting extorted. But your main concern was that if we pay, this guy will think I'm an ATM machine, right? He'll keep coming back again and again and again. Don't you articulate that to Catherine Magbanawa? If if it was a, if it was an extorter, that was one of the one of the concerns. And the other concern was not paying him and getting killed. The, you, but what you say is, well, I don't remember the quote exactly. The main concern, what I'm most worried about, is that they're going to keep coming back for more, right? I don't remember using the word the main concern. But what you don't say in here is like what you or your homies have been doing to me for two years. Of course not. I don't want her to think I'm setting her up. Why are you explaining extortion and how extortion works to Catherine Magbanoa? In there? Yeah. Because I, I know. But she knows too, doesn't she? So I, I repeat myself. I, I, I do that. You also explain it to your mother how extortion works. And she has known about it for two years too, right? From what I, what I told her, yeah. I'm reminding her. Then you say, if someone's messing with you, they're messing with me. And if someone's messing with me, they're messing with you. It's one and the same, right? Yes, I said that. You're in this together, right? We're both innocent. <coughs> you were very obviously relieved on the wire when you came to the conclusion that this was law enforcement. Would you agree with that? Very relieved, yeah. All right. And at that same time that on the wire you're expressing relief, or I should say shortly after all the relief expressed on the wire, we've got the arrest of Catherine Magbanawa, right? No. No. Okay. Would you agree that it goes relief on the wire, mm -hmm. then arrest of Kathy Magbanawa? Do you want to give me dates? Because Kathy was arrested six months later. Okay. The, the Can wire we was agree in April, that you were very relieved on the wire and that six months later, Catherine Magbanawa was arrested? She was arrested six months later, correct. And six months later, after you were completely relieved on the wire, you begin to exhibit these extreme behavior changes that we've heard about. And what is your explanation for that? Because I thought I'd be falsely arrested.
Did you encourage Catherine Magbanawa to reconcile with Garcia? That's a yes or no. Yes, I, for sure I did. Was that a good decision for her or a good decision for you? Neither. You've heard your lawyer say that you talk a lot. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. And you talk a lot on the wire, right? Yes, I do. Do you agree you're not a direct person? My direct person? There's a lot of circular talking on the wire. I mean, if, however you want to describe my mannerisms and talking, you're, you're welcome to describe them. I'll do that in closing. What I'm asking is, do you agree I that mean, you are like that? I think at times I'm direct, for sure. Do you have a way of saying things without really saying it? Um, no, I, th I think I'm pretty direct with things. <clears throat> do you think you can talk your way out of this? No, I don't. I'm not part of a murder. Who are they going to believe, right? An oral surgeon or a gangster? That's extorting me in my driveway and coming and threatening me? You're untouchable, right? No, I'm not part of this murder. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about going to the police on the wire, which I think we've well established did not happen. But you've always gone to the police before, right? I've had other things that I've gone to the police for, yeah. You've gone to the police in reference to something to do with your child's mother? Yes or no? Yes. You've gone to the police when you were threatened to be blackmailed over something with a woman back in 2015? Remember that? No, I, I didn't go to the police. Did you send a letter from your lawyer indicating that her... Describing her actions as an attempted shakedown and indicating that not only will Dr. Adelson never pay a settlement, he will undoubtedly prevail and seek attorney's fees against your client. R right. That's a, that's a civil complaint, and somebody was making an unfounded civil complaint and uh, threatening filing a lawsuit, and an attorney handled the civil complaint. The police were never notified. Mm. But it was a civil suit. It was somebody trying to shake you down for money. It was, it was a unfounded claim from a civil suit to me and another dentist that it was involving. It was a claim that potentially had criminal implications as well, wasn't it, Doctor? For me? Yes. No. There was never a police investigation with that. In 2018, did you report an aggravated assault where a vehicle was driving aggressively and narrowly avoided striking you? I, I had a reporter almost kill my 10-week-old puppy dog that I was walking because I was going for a walk in the morning and he was stalking outside my house. In 2018, did you report an aggravated assault where a vehicle was driving aggressively and narrowly avoided striking you? It was more than almost hit my dog too, but yeah. Do your nephews deserve to know the whole truth about who killed their father? Yeah, now they do. Do Danny's parents deserve to know what happened to their son? Absolutely. And you say you knew. I mean, you now say you knew a big piece of what happened, right? Yes. Do you feel bad about not volunteering that to Danny's parents? I feel a sense of relief that now I was able to tell everybody what finally happened. Yesterday. Almost ten years later, right? Yeah. And that's because you didn't just know a big piece of it. You were a big piece of it, weren't you, Doctor? I, I was extorted, and I, I knew a lot, yeah. One moment, please, Your Honor. Before we redirect, do any of the members of the jury need to take a break before we continue with the examinations? The bailiff will escort you back to the jury room. We'll have a brief 10-minute break before we have a redirect.
We will reconvene at 11.20. <laughs>
cross-examination for you of Charlie Adelson, the defendant in this trial, the man accused of orchestrating the plot to kill FSU law professor and his former brother-in-law, Dan Markell. He's being questioned by the assistant state attorney about this idea, this theory, this defense put forward by Adelson that he was not involved in the plot to kill his former brother-in-law, but that after Dan was killed, his girlfriend, Catherine Magbanawa, one of the people who was convicted in this case, uh, came forward to him and says, I know who killed Dan, and now they are threatening you and want you to pay up. And if you don't pay up, you're going to be killed. Your family's going to be killed. I'm trying to poke some holes in that story. Let's take a look. In June, June 24th of 2014, she says, baby, I'm going to need help on the employment info. I have to send to DCF for my kids' insurance. Also, if I have to end up moving later on, I need to show I'm working for you or else I won't be able to get an apartment. To which you respond, no problem. Remember that? Yeah, but I, w I wasn't thinking she was asking about payroll. I think she was asking just to say that she worked there. So we'd sign a letter saying that she was employed. But there, I, that doesn't say anything about writing checks to her. And that request was made in between the two trips that the killers made. That request, right. Well, she asked me if I could do that for her while I was dating her, and I never even did it. And did she ask if you could do that in between the two trips that the killers made? I didn't know when they went up, but I, I found out later that they went up in, uh, in June. All right, so that e email would have been sent, or I'm sorry, it's a text. That text would have been sent prior to what you're calling is the first layer of the extortion. That text was sent to me while I was dating her. But I never Prior to the first layer of extortion? The text was sent in June. Prior to the first layer of extortion? Before I was extorted, yeah. Before I broke up with her. And you say several times on the wire that she was cleaning at the office. Was she really cleaning? No, she never worked for us. She was doing some type of cleanup for you, wasn't she? No. What's the purpose of, of keeping Katie happy? Was she going to sick the, the Latin Kings on you if you made her unhappy? She was, she was protecting me. I, I didn't know what would happen. And she was keeping my mind, like when that ex the extortion never went up, and I just assumed, I thought that she wasn't part of it and she was protecting me. Usually extortion goes up. It always, always gets ratcheted up from what I've heard. What's the fear? of not keeping her happy is what I'm trying to understand. Well, I, I could get killed or the people who are extorting me could come rob me. And I didn't get killed. I didn't get robbed. The extortion never went up. I thought she was really protecting me. If that's the case, why not just, I mean, you're complying with everything they've asked you to do, right? I'm doing every, everything that was asked to do and that I said, yeah. So why reach out and say, hey, can I get you a trip to Key West to go with that extortion money? I never said, can I get you a trip to Key West? You didn't say try, you were trying to get them the owner's cottage. Maybe it's not in Key West. Trying to get them the owner's cottage because it's the nicest, $380 a night. The postcard in, do you recall all those conversations? Oh, yeah, for sure. And that was, she'd actually asked me weeks before the bump, um, because I had this connection at a place called the Moorings that I could get, like, a really great price, at a really affordable price for how nice the place is. Um, and I said I was going to make some calls and help her out and, and get it. And then I ended up giving her $300 for the, uh, when she picked up that bag at my house, I put $300 in it, and I got her a hotel room. Is that a yes? You remember that conversation? Yeah, I do. And she didn't want the trip in the text messages. She's saying, like, no thanks. And you're kind of forcing it down her throat. Do you agree with that? Yeah, because actually, it's funny. At, at that time in the wire, I was trying to see if Katie and him were together or they weren't together. So that's why I kept asking, how, you know, or how are things? Are you guys okay? You know, because if they were fighting, it was making me think more and more that the reason she was avoiding me was because she found out that he was the one who was doing the second extortion again. So I was trying to figure out if it was him and if she was lying to me. She, in this case, she says, I don't want to do anything. And you say, you know what, F that. 
you're going there. You're going to have a good time. For sure. I was trying to do nice things for her. And then you did you pay for a trip or offer, I guess, offer to pay for a trip to Santo Domingo for Catherine Magbano and Sigfredo Garcia to visit his parents? I, I didn't know who she was going with, but I, I paid for it. You're talking about airline tickets? Uh, yes. She Yeah, I, she called me up. She had an emergency. Something happened. She booked tickets for the wrong date. I, didn't, I had no idea who in the family she was going with. Um, and she had no money. And I, I remember I was in Chicago. I was at a friend's wedding, and I took out my credit card, and I gave her the credit card number and let her book tickets. I thought she was going with her kids. So is that a yes you paid for? Oh, yeah, no, I, I remember that Domingo. well. So for go sure. quicker if we can just I'm sorry. answer yeah. the question. Objection. What's the objection? <laughs> Argumentative. Overruled. Did you offer to buy Catherine Magvanoa and her mom a cruise? Yes, Katie had mentioned to me that she always wanted to be able to take her mom on a cruise. So I, I did I offered, but she never took me up on it. Did you call in prescriptions for Catherine Magbanoa? She was a patient of record at my office. Did you pay for a meal service for Catherine Magbanoa? Yeah, I did. Did you pay for car repairs for her? Yeah, she. all this stuff was making me think she was broke. So yes, you're right. Did you offer that she could use your Range Rover anytime? I said she could borrow the car, sure. Did she talk about getting a boat, and you offered to help her get a boat? I never offered to help her get a boat. I offered to help her look for a boat. Did you pay for the breast augmentation? No. No part of the breast augmentation? Not at all. So when she's saying at the same time she's the day of the breast augmentation, can I just put it on the credit card? Is she referring? Can I just put it on your credit card? Is she referring to something else, some other expense? I have no idea what she's referring to, but I, I did not pay for her boo job. What about this birthday gift for Sigfredo Garcia? What was the bonsai tree in the bag? What was that all about? Oh, she had asked me, um, and it's on a wire. It's actually, it's on 420, where she says, can you get me some bud from bud? My next door neighbor's bud. And she asked me if I could get some marijuana from my next door neighbor for her. So that's what, um, when I said I have a bonsai tree for you, I was, she asked me, and I got her a little bit of marijuana from my next-door neighbor for her. And you said, I don't know what a married man with kids would want for his birthday, but you did your best. I, I did my best. I was being completely, by the way, I was, I was being completely sarcastic. I never would get Sigfredo Garcia a present in my life. And you thought you hit it out of the park with the weed and the gift card. Did you say that? You, well, give me a little more context. The context is you don't know what a married man with kids would want for his birthday, but you did your best and you think you hit it out of the park. No, I was being completely sarcastic because she had asked me for that marijuana two weeks earlier and I gave it to her and then I was joking around when I gave it to her. I didn't want to uh, I didn't want him to think that I was hooking up with her. So I, I started to joke around about it. And then I was like, you know, maybe you can just tell him it was for me because I didn't want him to think that I'm hooking up with Katie, and that's why I gave You can bring them in. May, uh, may Mr. Adelson take the stand? I mean, yeah. yeah. Come back and take the stand, Mr. Adelson. I think we still have a few jurors using the restroom and we'll get started after that.
Can be seated. Members of the jury, I was informed by an unnamed source that some baked goods have made their way into the jury room. If there is a red velvet cake and no one brought enough to share, <laughs> contempt powers will be exercised. <laughs> Mr. Rauschbaum, you may redirect your client. Thank you. You remember when Miss Kappelman asked you about that text on August 25th, 2014, when Katie said to lose her number? Do you remember that those questions? Yeah. Isn't it true that within 12 hours of that text, you're offering her help on her car with an individual named Sully? Yes, I remember that. Why are you offering her that help just within hours after that text? Because I, I wanted to keep Katie happy, and she was getting mad at me, and I, I needed her protection. I didn't want her to stop protecting me. Now, there was a lot of questions about timing, and I want to make sure that everyone has this clear, because it's really important. In 2014, did you think Catherine McBanawa was extorting you? No, not at all. Now, after she testified, after she went to trial and testified, and after you saw the evidence of the money that was in her accounts, did you know that you were wrong and in fact she was the person who was extorting you, either with Sigfredo or without him? Yeah, and, to that, and that wasn't until 2019, five years later. So when Ms. Kappelman shows you all of those text messages and emails in 2014 that seem friendly, mm -hmm. at that point, and in 2016 that seemed friendly, and all the gifts, at that point in time, what did you think she was? I thought she was protecting me and she got dragged into this the way I did. Now, do you remember when Ms. Kappelman showed you that indictment? Yes. And it had your name on it and Catherine McBanawa's uh, name on it as co-conspirators? Yeah. Do you remember when she directly asked your sister in this courtroom if she participated in a birthday gift for your dad of the murder of Professor Markell? I remember her asking that. So her name's not in that indictment, but were you in this courtroom when the first thing in opening the state put on the board was a picture of all of you because their theory is that all of you participated in this murder, right? Yeah, they said me, my mom, my dad, my sister. And their theory is wrong about your sister, correct? 100%. Just like it's wrong about you? 100%. Now, Ms. Kappelman asked you about you paying over time as opposed to just paying the money all up front. Why did you pay over time? The reason I didn't pay it all off is because it became like a life insurance policy, and I felt like every month when I paid, I felt like they weren't going to kill me because if they killed me, they wouldn't get the money next month. Ms. Kappelman asked you, does it make sense? Why wouldn't they just rob you? Remember her, she asked you that question? Yeah. Were you in the courtroom? Do you recall when you were in the courtroom? Do you recall Luis Rivera saying he, he just wanted to rob the lady? Do you recall that? Yes. And do you recall he said that Sigfredo Garcia told him that Katie told him, we can't just rob the lady. We have to do a murder. Yes. Now, you don't know... You were told in the car that Luis Rivera was the killer. You've learned since that Sigfredo Garcia was the shooter, right? I learned that, yeah, I learned that he was convicted of, of shooting Dan. And, but in 2016, when I was sitting in the car, Katie was telling me that he, he went up in the rental car and that he was high on drugs and that it was Luis Rivera, the head of the Latin Kings, that killed Dan. She was protecting her husband. 
yeah, she, that's what she was telling me. I, at the time, I thought she wasn't a part of it, and she was telling me the truth. Now, Ms. Kappelman asked you about other times that you have called the police since this case began. Right. Well, not since this case began, but since the events of this case. She asked you about a photographer in a car. She asked you about um, uh, a woman who's the child of uh, the mother of your child when you called the police. In either of those circumstances, was someone threatening your life? No, not, not at all. In either of those circumstances, was someone threatening your family's life? Not at all. In either of those circumstances, had within hours before someone been shot in broad daylight in their driveway no not at all by the way you're heard on the wire about at some point your jet ski getting stolen right yes and do you recall what you say on the wire about your jet ski getting stolen i said i don't even want to catch the people well i'll ask it a different way when your jet ski was stolen did you call the police objection relatives I stand. Judge. May we go sidebar, Judge? Approach. Continue with your examination. Did you call your jet ski getting stolen? Yes. Did you call the police when your jet ski got stolen? No. Why not? Because I didn't want the people who knew where I lived to come, come back if I put them in prison. Now, Ms. Kappelman asked you several questions about why now are you telling what really happened? Tell the jury why you're now telling what happened. If, if I don't tell everyone what happened now, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison for something I didn't do. I have no further questions, Your Honor. You know, step down, Mr. Adelson. <coughs> the attorney is going to approach again on a brief matter.
members of the jury, I have news that's going to make you terribly sad. Well, before I give that, Mr. Rauschbaum, do you have any other witnesses you intend to call? No, Judge, we rest. Does the state plan to call a rebuttal case at this time? No, Your Honor. With both parties having rested their cases, I am going to release you for the afternoon to return on Monday. I, I know, shocked faces. <laughs> <laughs> With that, once again, I'm going to give you the same instruction. Do not discuss the case with each other or anyone else. Do not watch any news coverage. Do not find out any information concerning this matter. Again, this is going to be extremely important in reaching the end of this case. This instruction is being given to you for a very specific reason of not causing a mistrial by taking in information that did not take place in this courtroom. I know everyone before has agreed to abide by this and also uh, related that you understood this instruction, but the reason I keep repeating it is because it's that important. Have a good weekend. We will see you Monday morning for closing arguments. Please report at 8.30. Everyone can be seated. Oh, no. Donuts, no, no, no interest. It's got to gotta be something good. All right. For the attorneys, uh, we'll go ahead and go into recess now. When we come back from lunch, we will have the charge conference on the jury instructions. The initial draft that's been sent to everyone, both parties have it. Yes, Your Honor. All right, other than what's already been sent, did either party request additional instructions? The state has not. Nor does the defense not. All right, there was one other instruction that came to mind given all the discussion about intent and context. Uh, within standard instruction 13.1, there is a definition that defines intent. I previously given it in murder trials as a standalone instruction, which basically would give the jurors a definition of what is intent. Um, in this matter, I would believe it's appropriate. I'll allow you all to raise any objections or concerns about it uh, as we get into the charge conference itself, but I just wanted to make you aware it's part of the edit that I have been working on. Can you provide the number one, one last time? Your Honor? Yes. Standard instruction 13.1, this is the general burglary instruction, but within the definition section of that instruction, intent is defined, and that definition of intent would be what would be given unless either party is objecting to it taking place. Right? Thank you, Ron. Right. We will reconvene with the charge conference at 1.15.
in order to put that toothpaste back in the tube. No, that's what happened when I because got the checks. Otherwise, why would you bring your mom into this? I didn't want to. When I first told her on the phone and asked her to write the checks, I told her, I said, just as a long story, I brushed it off, and she didn't press anything, but I think she was out somewhere. It wasn't until when I picked up the checks that she started pressuring me and saying, this makes no sense. Why are you doing this? You're not dating Katie. And that's when she found out. But your mom is the most high strung out of the whole group, right? And she's old and she worries, right? I, I don't think she's super high strung, but she does worry about her kids. You don't? No. You've never met her. Well, you said she was, quote, notorious for making a big deal out of everything. I mean, she, she overreacts, but she's a mom. I think a lot of moms overreact. Okay. You could have told her, you know, Katie's down on her luck, and I'm just going to be putting her on the payroll. I mean, you were making enough money, you could tell her to just write checks, couldn't you? Why'd you have to tell her it was an extortion from Latin King gang members? Well, okay, at that time, I didn't know anything about the Latin Kings. But when I, when I told her what happened, I was thinking that, you know what, it actually would be good if someone knows what happened in case I get killed, they at least know what direction to start looking in. So until that point, nobody even knew. So I just, when she started questioning me and questioning me and questioning me, I just said, you know what, I'm going to tell you, but don't say a thing to Dad. Don't say a thing to Wendy. you got to promise me. I didn't want her to ever talk about this again. And that's, that was the day that she found out is when I got the checks. What she doesn't say on the wire is, it's happening again. I was approached by another extortionist today. Does she say that? No, she's talking very carefully. And you say carefully, but isn't carefully the same thing as code? No, they're two, two totally separate things. You know the difference? You weren't really giving her money for a TV, were you? Giving her money for a TV? This TV is probably going to be about five. Okay. I need you to bring cash tonight. I wish she picked another object on planet Earth other than TV. But TV is code for absolutely nothing. There is no code in this case involving TV and you keep circling and circling and circling TV, you're wrong. Is it a coincidence that the repair of the TV that you bought Wendy as a divorce gift because it was cheaper than hiring a hitman is your sister's alibi for the murder and then your mom brings up TV first call on the wire? It's, it's not an alibi for a murder. She had a broken TV. You gotta ask Lincoln who threw the remote at the TV. Was it a coincidence? Is the TV thing a coincidence? That's what I hear you say. Oh, that, that the repairman was there that day? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, that is a coincidence for sure. There's a and couple all, all of coincidences the, in this case. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I said there's a couple of coincidences in this case. I mean, she had people send her an email to go buy a bottle of bullet bourbon for their stock the bar party, and she was driving to a liquor store to buy a bottle of bullet bourbon on that day at that time, and her friend sent the email, and you have the email and evidence. Like, is that a coincidence? Yeah, coincidences happen. And that you might not be the right Katie talk. That doesn't seem to really fit with your theory of the case, does it? What was your explanation for that? Why you kept saying you might not be the right Katie? I mean, she's definitely the right Katie, uh, right? Absolutely. She knew it was. I was implying it was her. I was just trying to say, I'm not setting you up, but I need your help. On call B, your mom... You call your mom back and, and you say, you probe her a little bit and ultimately you say, you think someone's trying to blackmail you? That's crazy. Why does it sound like this is something that's new and unfathomable to you at that moment? Well, because I, I wasn't even following what my mom was talking about on the first call. And on the second call, um, which she shocked me when she said that, and I'd been extorted before, and her saying to bring cash, it just everything just didn't sound right. Could we play clip four, please? This is from Dolce. From what? I'm sorry, from what? Clip four from Dolce. Okay, let's finish this up. Uh, Dave and Philip. Dave, I'll start with you. Final thoughts. I think Georgia Kaplan is doing an amazing job here. She's exposing his lies, his inconsistencies. His story does not make any sense. And I think for those who are wanting more, look, Perry Mason is not real life, okay? You don't get a defendant breaking down the sand and admitting that he did it. 
she's going to take all this stuff and put it into her closing argument. It's going to make sense, especially the fact that this extortion scheme has no basis in reality, because why, as Georgia said, would the gangsters go and kill Dan Markell, a guy mm -hmm. who Charlie hates, when they could have just gone to Charlie and said, hey, give me money or else we'll kill you. Yep. It doesn't make any sense. Well, and I think it's really interesting that he never came forward after they were arrested and that if he was so scared to go to the police for his life and his family's life, but yet he tells his mom and now wraps her up in it too, Philip. Oh, yeah. Jesse, when the devil is on trial, you have to go to hell for your witnesses. And that's what we got here. The extortion scheme does not work because anybody who knows criminal law, criminal association will know that extorters do not take their money on the installment plan or on layaway. They want it now. They're not going to keep an open book account and just check up on you periodically uh, to get caught up on an old debt. It doesn't work that way. And the reason why is the deed was already done. They want their money either up front or very soon well, thereafter. I'll tell you what, Philip, and I'll tell you what, Dave, uh, obviously we're playing catch up here with this testimony. I know I have to sign yeah. you both off. Thank you so much. But we're going to come back. We're going to hear more of the cross. We're going to hear the redirect. But I can tell you right now that both sides in real time have officially rested their case. So we have a lot more to cover here on Law and Crime. Stay with us. Linda Kennebotten is up next. We'll be back.
Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden and thank you for being with us as we continue to bring you the latest in the trial for the Florida man named Charles Adelson, Adelson Charlie Adelson we call him, who took the stand in his own defense for his role in the death of Dan Markell. Adelson is accused of plotting the murder and hiring hit men to kill his former brother-in-law. The prosecution believes the defendant conspired to kill Markel back in 2014 to end a heated custody battle with Adelson's sister. The trigger man, Sigfredo Garcia, and his co-defendant, Catherine Magbanoa, were both already tried and convicted. Another co-defendant, the alleged hitman named Luis Rivera, pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. They are all behind bars. Now, Adelson's testimony concluded this morning, and both sides have now rested their case. Uh, but the jury was sent home for today, and we're going to pick up where we left off with Adelson's cross-examination. So let's get in there, and let's take a listen. Even if they had any evidence, it's the first words out of your mouth on this clip, even if they had any evidence, no, strike, the quote is, if you say, if they had any evidence, we'd have already gone to the airport. And I know you already testified about this, but, but does an innocent person say, if they had any evidence? Right, Katie, Katie's saying it's the police, and I'm saying that we're innocent, they're not gonna have any evidence to show we were part of something that we were part of. If we had any part of this, we'd be going to the airport right now. And Isn't still it say true, the doctor, thing. that they're not gonna have any evidence because you were careful? No, because we weren't a part of this. You were smart. No, we weren't a part of this. You walled yourself off I was the sure killers. they're not gonna have evidence to show I did something I didn't do. So we're not running to the airport. And you're untouchable, right? No, we didn't do a murder. I wasn't part of a murder. There's no reason to run to the airport. In the next clip, you're discussing what's going to happen if, if this person that did the bump goes to the police. And you're going through all these scenarios, you know, these possibilities. Wait, if, if he goes to the police? Yeah, the blackmailer goes to the police. They're going to say, where's the weapon? And he's not going to know. They're, he's just going to have hearsay, basically. Someone told me they did it. It's not going to be enough to, to get the investigation anywhere. Why are you thinking through the possibility of the blackmailer going to the cops if the blackmailer doesn't have any dirt on you to take to the cops? I, I wasn't thinking about the blackmailer. What I was trying to say is I don't know anything about Sigfredo. I don't know anything about this crime. I was trying to tell her that I'm harmless. I don't have any knowledge of what went on. Like, the last thing I wanted is that now that she's saying it's the police, is someone to come and kill me and think I'm some kind of loose end. So that, that's why I'm saying that. But that's not what you're saying. You're saying if this is a person that Luis Rivera ran his mouth to and they go to the police, it's going to be worth zero because they're not going to know anything other than, hey, my brother told me this. I don't know if I was saying well, someone who knows Luis Rivera. I was trying to make a point that I don't know anything. And then you suggest what they would have to do is get him to wear a wire and get the person to confess, and that's probably what this, what this could be, an effort to do, right? Well, they're, they're thinking that we were part of a murder, so that's, this was the, the same thing I said before, is that this is their theory, so this is a police tactic, and it could be either a bad guy or the police, and this is, this is how they're pursuing it. Exactly. So as long as you keep your mouth shut, you can get away with murder, right? No, not at all. Isn't that we what you told Ryan Fitzpatrick? No, Ryan Fitzpatrick is someone who stole over half a million dollars That's from me. That's not my question, sir. Sorry. Did you say that to Ryan Fitzpatrick? No, never. Never at all. 
Why do you go into so much detail about rental car examples? Let's start with strike that. Can you agree that the Prius, you knew that the police were looking for a Prius at the time you met at this Dolce Vita restaurant? I think it had been released at that time. All right, and you're, and you heard the recording. You're, you're arguing, let's play the clip. This is gonna be clip, I think let's play seven and eight, please. Dolce. like you're saying even if they track down the Prius even if there's DNA or fingerprints in the Prius meaning like they can link someone to the Prius that's not going to be enough evidence to make any arrests in this case is that what you're saying no not, not at all what I'm, what I'm doing is um, restating you've answered my question can I, can I th give you an on redirect you'll have an opportunity well, I yeah. My, question was, question. One moment. my question was, we're not just wildly arguing, Mr. Ho Mr. Adelson, please answer the question. Okay. Please I can just ask you a yes or no question. Please allow me to answer your question. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Okay, sure. Help yourself out. What, what I was saying to Katie is that the information she had just told me in the car about Sigfredo not being there when the crime was committed, she told me that Sigfredo was on high on drugs at the hotel and that Luis had rented a car, and that he's the one who, who killed Dan. And I'm restating to her that I don't have any knowledge of what, of what went on, and that I, all I know is that Sigfredo wasn't even there when this happened. So that's what I'm restating to her. That Sigfredo can't be caught even if he's connected to the crime, Sigfredo, to the car? I know that Sigfredo wasn't the one who killed Dan. Okay. Wouldn't it be good for you? Because you know now that Sigfredo is the extortionist, right? She just told you that in the car? Sigfredo, yeah. Okay. And wouldn't it be good for you if the police investigation into the Prius led to the arrest of the killers slash extortionists? If they arrested the people that killed Dan? Yeah. I know the extortion would stop. I, I, as long as I kept my mouth shut, I'd be safe. Right. So why are you trying to argue to her that, like, the car is not going to lead anywhere? They're not going to be able to do anything with the car? That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I, I know that Sinclair wasn't the one who killed him. Did you say on this recording, if, there's a, if they're a bad guy, there's two ways of dealing with it. Go ahead and contact the police. They'll contact him, the blackmailer and arrange a setup. Take him down and he'll proffer 10 years and now tell us everything you know or else you're gonna serve 10 years in prison. Next thing you know, this person is singing. 
He's calling out your name. My parents are going to have to say, going to have to tell the story of what happened. Singing about what? About the extortion? No, that's, I think you're reading it wrong. Or I know the audible is bad. What would are the... Those, are those the words? Yes, sir. What would the, the extortionist, and now I'm referring to the one that contacted your mother. The Latin King extortion. Well, they're both Latin yeah. Kings, right? The, the second extortion. What would they have to sing about? The second extortion would be singing and talking about the first extortion, where they learned their information from. Who cares? That doesn't have anything to do with you. Well, when, when they catch the first extortion, Katie's tied to them and I'm tied to Katie. They're going to come talk to us and we're going to be in danger when we tell them what happened. So that's we were. I was saying if they catch the second, they're going to turn in on the first, and that's the same thing I said yesterday. You gave very precise instructions to Catherine McBanwa on what she was to say when she calls the phone number, right? Yeah. Did you do I, that? I, absolutely. And then you say, "quote You'd better kill him because he's going to be a big problem, and he knows you who you are. If he can't do it, I'll have someone else do it." Aren't you telling her that if Garcia can't handle this problem and kill whoever's behind this, you will have someone else do it? You're, you're reading it totally wrong. It's a yes or no question, sir. No, no, you're wrong. When Dan Markell's murder was taking too long to happen, didn't you tell Catherine Magbanawa that if she couldn't get it done, you would find someone else to do it? No, I've never said that either. <laughs> and then you say in the recording, I'm back to Dolce now, yeah, and when the, guess what, when the effing police show up and there's a doctor, there's an oral surgeon standing there with a dead gang member in his effing driveway, they're not going to come down too hard on me. So, you knew you'd be believed if you went to the police, right? Um, I, didn't, I didn't know I'd be believed, but I, I feared for my life. And then you say, so help me God, if they fuck with my family, it's going to be fucking Nazi shit because this will be done. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Katie, I don't care what I spend, okay? I swear to God. What is Nazi shit? That, that's an expression that Katie would use to describe someone that's going crazy. I think the Nazis were absolutely crazy people. So I'm saying I'm going to get somebody to go crazy on the guy that's trying to extort my mom for money. I'll pay someone to go threaten him and to scare him. I Nazis. was not talking about killing anybody. Will you say the word kill? Yes? No. Oh, when you're, when you're putting the words in my mouth, well, we can no, do that sir. sentence. Do you say the word kill? I'm talking about if Sigfredo's coming after you, he's such a dangerous guy, you'd have to kill him to stop him. That's the only thing you could do. I'm not talking about killing the extorter. I'm talking uh, uh, second extortion. Okay. I'm saying that if, if Sigfredo's coming after you, the only thing that you could do is you'd have to kill him to stop him. I'm not talking about okay. killing anybody. I'm talking about that's the only way that you could stop Sigfredo from coming after you is you would have to kill him. And that's exactly what I said there. You're wrong. That's exactly what I said. All right. Thank you. Nazis kill, right? Isn't that like their primary objective? No, I think Nazis are insane, crazy people. That exterminate, right? That kill, yes, but they're, but this they're crazy. And, that's, and she would, that was an expression she would use, and that's what I, I used it to her, but basically saying I'm going to have someone go crazy on this guy. I could have used the word crazy. I thought it was interchangeable. Isn't what you're doing here in this portion of the tape feeling her out to make sure Garcia doesn't have any bad feelings toward you? I was, I, when I said it, yeah, I thought he could have been behind the, the second extortion. I, I think I've said that before. And you go into, like, how your relationships didn't overlap, you never disrespected him, and you mentioned that you know, you don't think that they, I assume you mean the, these other people, associates that have contacted your mom would want to mess with his connections, right? You remember? The, you're talking about the copycat extortion. Right. And then you ask if, if he's too far removed or can he still make a call? Are you referring to Garcia in that? Yeah, exactly. So can Garcia 
make a call to try to figure out who this is. Could Garcia help stop the second extortion? Someone's doing a piggyback extortion on the first. That's exactly what I said. On the topic of conversation for Catherine Magbanawa, don't you say I look for things to do? I show you that's the difference. You don't ask me for shit. You said all those things, right? Absolutely, because that's, that's proving that what I've been saying all along is that I didn't think she was part of this, so I was doing things to keep her happy from time to time. Yeah, I, Ethan's birthday I brought up there. I gave her $300. I helped her out with the car when her car was broken, um, for sure. And then you say, listen, you giving somebody money is not an admission of any kind of guilt. Would paying the money have made her look guilty? That's what, that's what she was saying to me. She said, it's the police. And you, you can't pay the police. They're going to think you were part of a murder, and they're going to arrest you. But if it was an extortionist, it could have created a monster, right? And if you don't pay the extortionist, you could get killed. So when these or you could guys— keep getting extorted. I'm sorry, go I, ahead. I said, if you don't pay the extortionist, you could get killed, or you could keep getting extorted. But your main concern was— that if we pay, this guy will think I'm an ATM machine, right? He'll keep coming back again and again and again. Don't you articulate that to Catherine Magbanawa? If if it was a, if it was an extorter, that was one of the one of the concerns. The other concern was not paying him and getting killed. The, you, but what you say is, well, I don't remember the quote exactly. The main concern, what I'm most worried about, is that they're going to keep coming back for more, right? I don't remember using the word the main concern. But what you don't say in here is like what you or your homies have been doing to me for two years. Of course not. I don't want her to think I'm setting her up. Why are you explaining extortion and how extortion works to Catherine Magbanawa? In there? Yeah. Because I, I know. But she knows too, doesn't she? So I repeat myself. I, I, I do that. You also explain it to your mother how extortion works, and she's has known about it for two years too, right? From what I, what I told her, yeah. I'm reminding her. Then you say, if someone's messing with you, they're messing with me, and if someone's messing with me, they're messing with you. It's one and the same, right? Yes, I said that. You're in this together, right? We're both innocent. <clears throat> you were very obviously relieved on the wire when you came to the conclusion that this was law enforcement. Would you agree with that? Very relieved, yeah. All right. And at that same time, that on the wire you're expressing relief, or I should say, shortly after all the relief expressed on the wire, we've got the arrest of Catherine Magbanawa, right? No. No, okay. Would you agree that it goes relief on the wire, mm -hmm. then arrest of Catherine Magbanawa? Do you want to give me dates? Because Kathy was arrested six months later. Okay. The, the Can wire we was agree in April that you were very relieved on the wire and that six months later, Catherine McBanawa was arrested? She was arrested six months later, correct. And six months later, after you were completely relieved on the wire, you begin to exhibit these extreme behavior changes that we've heard about. And what is your explanation for that? Because I thought I'd be falsely arrested. <clears throat> Did you encourage Catherine Magbanawa to reconcile with Garcia? That's a yes or no? Yes, I, for sure I did. Was that a good decision for her or a good decision for you? Neither. You've heard your lawyer say that you talk a lot. Do you agree with that? 
Yes, I do. And you talk a lot on the wire, right? Yes, I do. Do you agree you're not a direct person? My direct person? There's a lot of circular talking on the wire. I mean, if, however you want to describe my mannerisms and talking, you're, you're welcome to describe them. I'll do that in closing. What I'm asking is, do you agree that I mean, you are like that? I think at times I'm direct, for sure. Do you have a way of saying things without really saying it? Um, no, I, th I think I'm pretty direct with things. Do you think you can talk your way out of this? No, I don't. I'm not part of a murder. Who are they going to believe, right? An oral surgeon or a gangster? That's extorting me in my driveway and coming and threatening me? You're untouchable, right? No, I'm not part of this murder. You there was a lot of talk about going to the police on the wire, which I think we've well established did not happen. But you've always gone to the police before, right? I've had other things that I've gone to the police for, yeah. You've gone to the police in reference to something to do with your child's mother? Yes or no? Yes. You've gone to the police when you were threatened to be blackmailed over something with a woman back in 2015? Remember that? No, I, I didn't go to the police. Did you send a letter from your lawyer indicating that her, describing her actions as an attempted shakedown and indicating that not only will Dr. Adelson never pay a settlement, he will undoubtedly prevail and seek attorney's fees against your client? R right, that's a, that's a civil complaint and somebody was making an unfounded civil complaint and uh, threatening filing a lawsuit and an attorney handled the civil complaint. The police were never notified. But it was a civil suit. It was somebody trying to shake you down for money. It was, it was a unfounded claim from a civil suit to me and another dentist that it was involving. It was a claim that potentially had criminal implications as well, wasn't it, doctor? For me? Yes. No. There was never a police investigation with that. In 2018, did you report an aggravated assault where a vehicle was driving aggressively and narrowly avoided striking you? I, I had a reporter almost kill my 10-week-old puppy dog that I was walking because I was going for a walk in the morning and he was stalking outside my house. In 2018, did you report an aggravated assault where a vehicle was driving aggressively and narrowly avoided striking you? He was more able to hit my dog too, but yeah. Do your nephews deserve to know the whole truth about who killed their father? Yeah, now they do. Do Danny's parents deserve to know what happened to their son? Absolutely. And you say you knew, I mean, you now say you knew a big piece of what happened, right? Yes. Do you feel bad about not volunteering that to Danny's parents? I feel a sense of relief that now I was able to tell everybody what finally happened. Yesterday, almost 10 years later, right? Yeah. And that's because you didn't just know a big piece of it. You were a big piece of it, weren't you, doctor? I, I was extorted and I, I knew a lot, yeah. One moment, please, Your Honor. redirect. Do any of the members of the jury need to take a break before we continue with the examinations? The bailiff will escort you back to the jury room. We'll have a brief 10-minute break before we... Well, there you have the end of the cross-examination of the prosecutor. Uh, I'm joined here by my great guest, Kathleen Bogenschutz, uh, who is in Florida, by the way, and earlier today was at that same courthouse that uh, we are hearing about the murder of Dan Markell and the trial of Charlie Adelson, and of course, former president of the New Jersey Bar Association, my friend Bob Hilla joins me here in the studio. Kathleen, let me start with you first. Here's what I don't understand, and I, and I don't know how effective the cross was or not, but the idea that he was extorted after Markel was killed so that for some reason uh, the police wouldn't think that he was the killer, I'm having a little trouble wrapping my whole head around that. Could you help me with it, please? No, uh, I can't. 
it, it's it's a crazy theory. Um, I, I think that what they're doing is they're doing what they can with what they have, and what they have is a mess. It's just so much evidence with the the money trail, and the the phone calls, and uh, even the way he's acting on the stand. I hats off to his lawyer. I, I I think that his lawyer prepared him admirably to testify. It is clear he's put in the work here, but he's almost been prepared too much. The difference in demeanor in those videos and him on the stand, it's like two totally different people. Uh, it, and that's to me is disingenuous as well. It, it's very difficult to follow as to what this extortion plot means or how this could possibly be making sense to somebody with advanced degrees. Yeah. Now, Bob Hilla, okay, you and I were talking a little bit earlier, so let's bring our viewers into this right now in terms of that. You have somebody here who did take the stand, though, and I agree with Kathleen that unlike many witnesses, he was prepared by his lawyer, and his lawyer did a great job on direct examination. But And we always say, well, you know, people don't take the stand. They rely on the Fifth Amendment. They must be guilty, even though they're not, the jury's not supposed to consider that. But here he takes the stand. He's testifying for the better part of two days. Does the jury give him a plus because of that, no matter how crazy the story sounds? Well, I think what the jury's going to do here is they're going to want to listen carefully about what he has to say. I mean, there is a lot of evidence. They have to weigh these statements that he made to authorities or in uh, the wiretaps or the tapes, um, whether those really are direct admissions or whether they sort of suggest they might be in connection with the other evidence. So I think the jury's going to have to wade through all of that. But in the end, they got to be able to say, you know, does this defense theory cause us to waver or does it really not hold any water and we have an abiding belief in guilt here because that's what it's going to come down to. So Kathleen, just going back to you then for this period, it seems to me and all of us that obviously the prosecution has is, is got Luis Rivera, uh, they got uh, Garcia, uh, then they, after two trials, they got Kathleen Magbanua, and now they're going after Charlie Adelson. Are they trying to get the parents uh, of the Adelsons and also Wendy, the wife, do you think they're trying to go up this step ladder, step by step, no matter how long it takes? That, oh, so I, I will tell you that I used to work for the state attorney's office here in Tallahassee and Leon, so same office that Georgia and Sarah Catherine work for. I do not have any inside information about this. This is my personal opinion. Um, yeah, I think they're gonna go after the parents. And how? Um, I think how, that they how, have enough. How? how do you think they're going to go after the parents? By, by flipping and, Adelson if he gets convicted? Uh, I don't know if he would flip. Um, if he hasn't flipped yet, um, I, I do think that uh, that one of the things, or I, I do think that they probably have enough to go after Donna right now. I don't know what else is on these wiretaps. We've only heard what we've been shown against Charlie. So I don't know what else is on these things. Um, and one of the things that I, I, I think is, and you heard Georgia harping on this previously, um, Dan Rashbaum is from Miami, um, and, and this is part of the problem with having a, a non-local lawyer. I've lived here for five and a half years. I did the first nine years of my career as a prosecutor in Broward, which is where Charlie's from. So, and I grew up there. Having moved to Tallahassee five and a half years ago, I have only gone down that street to look at real estate. <laughs> um, and it's close to downtown and I'm in my late thirties and I'm a lawyer and you know, kids, you know, similar lifestyle. I've only gone down that street to look at real estate. It is on the way to nowhere. And a Tallahassee jury knows that. There is no cut through. For Wendy to go buy that house or try to go buy that house, to me, that's a dangerous little thing she needs to explain, better than it was already explained. 
on the road to nowhere. Well, we're going to find out from when we get a verdict here whether it was the prosecution or the defense. But we're going to come back, and when we, you listen, when we come back, you'll hear, because you're not going to miss a thing. We're going to, we had paused the tape. You're going to hear the redirect testimony by the prosecutor of uh, the witness on the stand. That's the defendant, Charlie Adelson. Please stay with us. Thank you for coming back to the Law and Crime Network. Now, both sides have officially rested in the trial against Florida Dennis Charlie Adelson, who is accused of plotting the murder of his former brother-in-law, Dan Markell. 
Uh, Adelson, though, wrapped up his testimony on the stand. Yes, another defendant on the stand this morning as he stands charged with first-degree murder and conspiracy to kill Dan Markell. Uh, before the break, we were catching you up on the cross-examination of the defendant, Charlie Adelson, but then, as you know, there's redirect. So let's hear what he had to say to, on redirect to his own attorney. Do you remember when Ms. Kappelman asked you about that text on August 25th, 2014, when Katie said to lose her number. Do you remember that those questions? Yeah. Isn't it true that within 12 hours of that text, you're offering her help on her car with an individual named Sully? Yes, sir. I remember that. Why, why are you offering her that help just within hours after that text? Because I, I wanted to keep Katie happy, and she was getting mad at me, and I, I needed her protection. I didn't want her to stop protecting me. Now, there was a lot of questions about timing, and I want to make sure that everyone has this clear, because it's really important. In 2014, did you think Catherine Magbanua was extorting you? No, not at all. Now, after she, testif after she went to trial and testified, and after you saw the evidence of the money that was in her accounts, did you know that you were wrong and in fact she was the person who was extorting you, either with Sigfredo or without him? Yeah, and, to that, and that wasn't until 2019, five years later. So when Ms. Kappelman shows you all of those text messages and emails in 2014 that seem friendly, mm -hmm. At that point, and in 2016, that seemed friendly. And all the gifts. At that point in time, what did you think she was? I thought she was protecting me, and she got dragged into this the way I did. Now, do you remember when Ms. Kappelman showed you that indictment? Yes. And it had your name on it and Catherine Magbanua's uh, name on it as co-conspirators? Yeah. Do you remember when she directly asked your sister in this courtroom if she participated in a birthday gift for your dad of the murder of Professor Markell? I remember her asking that. So her name's not in that indictment, but were you in this courtroom when the first thing in opening the state put on the board was a picture of all of you because their theory is that all of you participated in this murder, right? Yeah, they said me, my mom, my dad, my sister. And their theory is wrong about your sister, correct? 100%. Just like it's wrong about you. 100%. Now, Ms. Kappelman asked you about you paying over time as opposed to just paying the money all up front. Why did you pay over time? The reason I didn't pay it all off is because it became like a life insurance policy, and I felt like every month when I paid, I felt like they weren't going to kill me because if they killed me, they wouldn't get the money next month. Ms. Kappelman asked you, does it make sense? Why wouldn't they just rob you? Remember her, she asked you that question? Yeah. Were you in the courtroom? Do you recall when you were in the courtroom? Do you recall Luis Rivera saying he, he just wanted to rob the lady? Do you recall that? Yes. And do you recall he said that Sigfredo Garcia told him that Katie told him, we can't just rob the lady. We have to do a murder. Yes. Now, you don't know. You were told in the car that Luis Rivera was the killer. You've learned since that Sigfredo Garcia was the shooter, right? I learned that, yeah, I learned that he was convicted of, of shooting Dan. And, but in 2016, when I was sitting in the car, Katie was telling me that he, he went up in the rental car and that he was high on drugs and that it was Luis Rivera, the head of the Latin Kings, that killed Dan. She was protecting her husband. Yeah, she, that's what she was telling me. At, at the time, I thought she wasn't a part of it, and she was telling me the truth. Now... Ms. Kappelman asked you about other times that you have called the police. 
since this case began. Right. Well, not since this case began, but since the events of this case. She asked you about a photographer in a car. She asked you about um, uh, a woman who's the child of uh, the mother of your child when you called the police. In either of those circumstances, was someone threatening your life? No, not, not at all. In either of those circumstances, was someone threatening your family's life? Not at all. In either of those circumstances, had within hours before someone been shot in broad daylight in their driveway? No, not at all. By the way, you heard on the wire about at some point, your jet ski getting stolen, right? Yes. And do you recall what you say on the wire about your jet ski getting stolen? I said I don't even want to catch the people. Well, I'll ask it a different way. When your jet ski was stolen, did you call the police? Objection. Relevance. I sustained. Judge. May, continue. May we go sidebar, Judge? Approach. The nation. Did you recall your jet ski getting stolen? Yes. Did you call the police when your jet ski got stolen? No. Why not? Because I didn't want the people who knew where I lived to come come back if I put them in prison. Now, Ms. Kappelman asked you several questions about why now are you telling what really happened? Tell the jury why you're now telling what happened. If, if I don't tell everyone what happened now, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison for something I didn't do. I have no further questions, Your Honor. You know, step down, Mr. Adelson. Okay, so I still have my two great guests with me, Bob Hella and Kathleen Bogenschutz. Bob, I'm going to start with you because you are here in the studio with me, and we were watching this together. Now, again, he's very well prepared, but... Uh, this whole idea again that for some reason uh, he is being blackmailed why because somebody would think he's the killer I, I'm not sure I get it did the defense actually have to point to somebody else who had the motive here well what's interesting here is too he gets some help actually from the ex-girlfriend because in earlier in the other cases she had testified and she wasn't involved which is consistent with his belief, at least that he's saying now on the stand here, that he didn't think she had anything to do with it until later on when she finally went into the whole involvement or, or you know, that led to the conviction. So, you know, it, the question's not, is this a great alternative? The question is, is it going to be a sufficient enough alternative, reasonable alternative, that um, it causes the jury to pause. And that, of course, is going to be the debate they're going to have internally here. Uh, you know, and again, um, he doesn't have a lot of baggage. So the first thing is defend it really if you don't have something that really could sink you. Um, it's going to come down to you better be able to help yourself when you testify. Um, he's doing the best he can. I think what's interesting is the prosecution's giving him a lot of opportunity to explain his answers rather than really nail him into things that are uh, adverse facts. But again, if his explanations start to deteriorate what may be a good story to, in the beginning, then you could see why she's doing that, you know, uh, strategy. Strategy, yeah. So, uh, Kathleen, um, Bob's is right. The prosecution has the burden to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. I've been a prosecutor. You've been a prosecutor. Uh, we know this, okay? Uh, going back to my question, did the defense have to give an alternative reason for a motive that uh, Luis Rivera and Fredo Garcia would actually go and kill Markel? Did they have to show something else besides uh, the relationship with Kathleen? Because Kathleen did deny both in two trials that she had anything to do with it. Now she's coming around and supposedly she's not getting any benefit, but we know better than that. Talk to me. So um, they, they gavel to gavel on both of Katie's trials as well. Um, and I distinctly remember her like almost whining kind of to the jury and trying to make eye contact with all of them going, I know it looks bad. I know it looks really bad, but it, it, I didn't do it. Um, and she testified in her own defense and that is what she said. But 
the fact is she's acknowledged it looks really bad. Um, and she was picking up money to give to these people. I, I just, you know, I, I, I think that the money trail here, it, it, there is, there is no explanation for it other than this cockamamie extortion scheme. And they're doing what they can with what they have. The problem is what they have is bad. So Kathleen says it comes down, Bob Hello, to show me the money. And the money trail could only lead to one person. And it's the family. There's nobody else. And they had the, and they're all very close, obviously. But to kill a person in this way over a, you know, a child custody fight that it gets worked at almost every day in courts and uh, bitter, bitter divorces without murder? Well, it's it, it, in murder for hire and extortion, money's involved and there's a money trail in both. The question is whether the extortion theory of the defense is believable. What's interesting about that is it, it allows this defendant to really attack the credibility of some of the key witnesses here that the state has. Um, you know, so again, the other issue, to your point, the jury's going to say, why would this guy throw everything away to get in bed with these two people, Rivera and Garcia, um, to kill his brother-in-law over a custody dispute? You know, so again, that's something they're going to have to look at and weigh against the reasonableness of this extortion theory, which, you know, may not be great. But is it out of the realm of a reasonable alternative that the jury could consider? Remember, you only need one right. to cause a mistrial. You obviously need them all to have an acquittal. Yeah, and uh, you know, defense is always happy with a mistrial in these type of cases, talking as a defense attorney. Uh, but we're going to have to see what happens. We're going to be talking more about this case. But you know what? To hear what we're going to say and to repeat some of the testimony and talk about all the other cases we have on the docket today, you have to come back here at the other side of the Law and Crime Network. We'll be waiting for you.
thank you for coming back to Law and Crime. Both sides now have officially rested in the trial against Florida dentist Charlie Adelson, who is accused of plotting the murder of his former brother-in-law, Dan Markell. Adelson wrapped up his testimony on the stand this morning as he stands charged with first-degree murder and conspiracy to kill Markel. Now, Charlie Adelson was cross-examined on a statement he made in a wiretap phone call about whether the police had any evidence against him, his family, others. But let's listen and take a listen to what was said in court now. The quote is, if, you say, if they had any evidence, we'd have already gone to the airport. And I know you already testified about this, but... But does an innocent person say if they had any evidence? Right. Katie, Katie's saying it's the police, and I'm saying that we're innocent. They're not going to have any evidence to show we were part of something that we were part of. If we had any part of this, we'd be going to the airport right now. And I <clears throat> Isn't still it say true, the same doctor, thing. that they're not going to have any evidence because you were careful? No, because we weren't a part of this. You were smart. No, we weren't a part of this. You walled yourself off. From I was the sure killers. they're not going to have evidence to show I did something I didn't do. So we're not running to the airport. And you're untouchable, right? No, we didn't do a murder. I wasn't part of a murder. There's no reason to run to the airport. In the next clip, you're discussing what's going to happen if if this person that did the bump goes to the police. And you're going through all these scenarios, you know, these possibilities. Wait, if, if he goes to the police? Yeah, the blackmailer goes to the police. They're going to say, where's the weapon? And he's not going to know. They're, he's just going to have hearsay, basically. Someone told me they did it. It's not going to be enough to, to get the investigation anywhere. Why are you thinking through the possibility of the blackmailer going to the cops if the blackmailer doesn't have any dirt on you to take to the cops? I wasn't thinking about the blackmailer. What I was trying to say is I don't know anything about Sigfredo. I don't know anything about this crime. I was trying to tell her that I'm harmless. I don't have any knowledge of what went on. Like, the last thing I wanted is that now that she's saying it's the police, is someone to come and kill me and think I'm some kind of loose head. So but that's that, why I'm saying that. But that's not what you're saying. You're saying if this is a person that Luis Rivera ran his mouth to and they go to the police, it's going to be worth zero because they're not going to know anything other than, hey, my brother told me this. I don't know if I was saying well, someone who knows Luis Rivera. I was trying to make a point that I don't know anything. Kathleen Bogus, let me go to you first. Now, let's assume there is a juror who really want, who likes the fact that he testified in his own defense. Now, the prosecution there, did she give him a defense uh, that you were careful you were smart. You walled yourself off. Well, if careful, smart, and walled yourself off, and then the only evidence is Magbanoa, uh, then isn't it possible that they could say, wait, why should we believe her and not him? Sure. I mean, if it was just Magbanoa, I mean, keep in mind, he got arrested before she flipped. So uh, they, they thought they had enough to go on Charlie without her, um, and, and she flipped later. Uh, that's my understanding. So I, uh, I, I, they don't just have her. She is a bonus. Uh, she is an extra, but they've got the money. They've got the wiretaps. They've got uh, those that horrible video from Dolce yeah. Vita. Yeah, let me, let me bring Bob into this, Bob. We have about 20 seconds left with that. But they did wait until they had her convicted. So does that mean that they thought they had a weak case without her? I think it absolutely means uh, they, they absolutely believe that, because otherwise, why go through all that effort and then save him for less? They work usually from the outside in and check those boxes, and they did it here. Yeah. Yeah, so very, very interesting. Obviously, we're going to be talking more about this case uh, and all the other cases on the DACA, but especially this one because Charlie Adelson, another defendant on the stand, another defendant cross-examined, only here on Law and Crime, will have analysis on the other side. Stay with us.
the codependence. So why would someone need to be killed on this whole extortion theme? Why don't we listen? Because it's very, very confusing. Why did Garcia and Rivera, or whoever did it, I guess I should say, why did whoever did it need to kill someone to extort you? You gotta, you gotta ask them. Well, why, why couldn't they just come put a gun to your head and say, give me all the money and you're safe? Thank God they did. Thank God they didn't? They, thank God they didn't. I would have gotten killed. If Garcia hated you, why would he drive to Tallahassee twice to kill someone you hated? He was. It sounds like he was part of the extortion or Katie put him up to it. Doesn't blackmail or extortion usually involve the extortionist having some kind of dirt on the victim? I know how this was done to me. I, I know what I'm just telling you what happened to me. I don't I'm not an expert in it. If they had come in and threatened to kill you, would you have given them the money in your safe? If someone came and put a gun to my head and yeah, I would have opened up my safe and I would give them the money. I still don't get how killing Dan Markell advances the ball for them to extort money out of you. Do you? Yeah, I have a theory. They, they could extort me for life, and I don't think they knew exactly how much I had in the safe. I mean, she knew I had a lot of money in the safe. But this mm -hmm. way I could get extorted for life, and that's what happened. And I was paying, stuck paying $3,000 a month. But you could have gotten extorted for life just by the threat of death by Latin King, couldn't you, doctor? I mean, this, this, was more, this was as real of a threat as you get. I mean, these guys aren't messing around. <coughs> All right, you didn't report this after Garcia was arrested, did you? <clears throat> did not report this after Garcia's arrest? No, not at all. Okay, you did keep paying Catherine Magdana after Garcia's arrest? No, I never saw her again. Did not report this after Magdana's arrest, correct? Correct. Did not testify in either of their trials, correct? Was, was never contacted to, but yes. You were okay with the possibility of them getting away with killing Dan Markell. I thought the truth was gonna come out in 2019. How, if the witness who knows something doesn't come forward? Katie knows what, knows what happens and knows I was extorted and her trial was in 19 and I was expecting the truth to come out then. And, and instead that... I found out that she was having this affair with him <laughs> on me and she lied and all this money was going to her. So if her defense had been, I was an innocent conduit to an extortion, you would have backed her up on that? If, if she would have come in and told the truth, and you, yeah, for sure. You would have heard the same story. Okay, Kathleen, now we know in a jury room, jurors kind of like to find their own truth, and sometimes they come up with theories and, and you, you can't believe it. But, you know, this is kind of an interesting case. What if the jury believes that, yes, he was being extorted because he knew that perhaps his sister and his parents had set up the hit through his office, but he didn't really do it, but he was being extorted to protect them. Could you think that there's a seed of that somewhere in here? Yes. I mean, look, I never say cases are slam dunks because you never know what a jury is going to do. Um, and you never know how long they're going to be out. So, uh, and you never know what's going to resonate with one of them. All you need is one if you're on the defense team. And they've done such a great job preparing Charlie for, for testimony that maybe somebody's just going to like him on the stand. He, he's not hateable on the stand. He's hateable on the tapes, I'll give you that. But not hateable on the stand, but right now we're in the stand. So Bob, okay, so I come to you now. You are my juror, right? What are you feeling right now in terms of whether the state has proven their case beyond a reasonable doubt uh, in terms of using this cross-examination? Well, I think on the one hand, I could probably say in looking at the evidence, the state has probably established a case on the murder charge against the defendant. However, has they done it beyond a reasonable doubt? And one of the things in my mind as a juror, and I think the defense may be harping on, will harp on this, is how can you really extort someone effectively unless you have something on them? And if they didn't have something on uh, the defendant doing something unlawful, um, then the killing does make sense 
because in, in, if they knew this fellow believed he had a lot of money through the girlfriend, uh, because this idea that um, you know the extortion is nonsense and somehow they were going to go out and kill this uh, person because he wanted them to do it, um, you know, it, 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 it's just a problematic thing that why would he go ahead and do that and get involved with these people in the first place? Flip side of that is why would they kill him out of, uh, the, he's upset about him going out with right. the girlfriend. So, you know, there's a lot of wild cards in this and the jurors are going to want to have to feel comfortable before they send this guy to prison uh, or convict him for murder one. And think about what we're discussing, how we're talking about this. But I do want you to listen to another soundbite, another clip. And this is uh, on the cross-examination of Charlie Adelson for the uh, killing, the alleged conspiracy, hiring the hit people to kill Dan Markell, his uh, brother-in-law. And where there, she's asking him, and he's talking about was he going to be afraid about the rest of his family either being extorted or being killed? Remember, he keeps mentioning the Latin kings uh, all the time to try to uh, show that there's some fear here. So why don't we take a listen to this part? Where is your family located now? You don't have to be specific, but is your mom and dad, are they still in South Florida? They, yeah, they still live in South Florida. Okay, what about Wendy and the boys? My parents live about... 30, 35 minutes from my sister, and I used to live about 45 minutes from them. And ha are they okay, as far as you know, physically, today, as we sit here? Yes. And are you concerned that because you've told now on the Latin Kings that they're going to come kill your whole family? I mean, I, I just told you that I knew that, was told then that Luis Rivera, the head of the Latin Kings, killed Dan Markell. So, I mean, I do have some concern when I get out. Right, but We're even after, after me. sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I said I do have some concern with Latin Kings now that I spoke and told what I know. But what about, I mean, Rivera was already in custody at one point, as well as Garcia and I ban well, My understanding is your continued fear was due to other Latin Kings, potentially. Is that accurate? These are highly connected people. Luis Rivera, the head of the Latin Kings, in custody means absolutely nothing. If you think he can't send somebody from the outside, you're wrong. All right. So my question to you is, did that happen? Because you told last, you told yesterday. Was I killed yesterday when I was in jail? No. And nobody in your family has been killed so far? You're talking about in the last 24 hours? Right. Not that I know. Okay. But, but you're worried about that? I think now that I've spoken, mm -hmm. I do have a concern, yes. Okay but not too concerned to remain silent when it's your own butt on the line, right? I'm, I'm here to tell the truth. And uh, yes, do I have a concern now that I told you what happened? Absolutely. Mom tells you on that first wire call that the bump involves the two of us, referring to yourself and your mom, right? Yes, that's what she said. She said. And would you agree, prior to your explanation, that that looks pretty incriminating? I think if you don't know what happened, you can assume the worst. So let me talk to Kathleen Bogenschutz, a criminal defense attorney who happened to be at that same courthouse where this cross-examination was occurring just this morning. So Kathleen, we know that in cases involving family law and child custody, that's where people get killed. We saw a judge in Maryland last week get killed by uh, a litigant. We've seen lawyers get killed. We've seen uh, spouses and even others be killed in the process of it. That's where things happen. Me as a criminal defense attorney, usually in, uh, representing uh, somebody convicted, uh, accused of homicide, I'm not concerned at all about my back being uh, to the gallery. So talk to me about this. Now, he's talking about safety, about the Latin kings, because he's now spoken about the Latin kings. But doesn't that also indicate that knowing that Luis Rivera, Severo Garcia, could be the kind of people that could kill somebody for him? Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll tell you that uh, actually the, the testimony by Rivera to me, having been a prosecutor in South Florida with the Latin Kings, uh, you know, revolving around some of my cases, it, that, that is consistent. Like, I'm not going to kill that guy in front of the kids. That's 100 percent. There's honor among thieves uh, is, is one of the things that we talk about as defense attorneys. Um, I don't think they're going after the kids. Um, 
and if they were going to go after the Adelsons, it would have already happened. So I, I, I think that this is a really valid line of questioning. And it's I, I happen to think it's very effective. I don't know how effective it will be with a Tallahassee jury. Very interesting. Well, you know what? We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be talking more about what happened in that courtroom this morning with the cross-examination of the defendant who is on the stand. We're seeing another one, but this one particularly important. This is involving the death of Dan Markell back in 2014. Defendant Charlie Adelson saying to the jury, I am innocent and you can't prove it. But we'll be back and we'll see. Right. Here, just lower. Mr. Rauschbaum, Ms. Myers, typically how I do this, I go through each instruction and we simply just edit it as we go. I believe it's better to work through the full instructions so that way everyone has an opportunity to be heard concerning anything they wish to argue for or anything that they want to omit. That's fine, Your Honor. As to 3.1, is there any objection or request? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. 3.2, any objection or request? No objection. Request would be um, probably a conspiracy to commit probably first degree murder. Right. I will make that edit. And the same with regard to solicitation, Mr. Evans? Yes, sir. Does the defense wish to be heard concerning 3.2? No, Your Honor. All right. As to introduction to homicide, given what has been argued as a part of the defense case, I really don't know how the justifiable or excusable can be given. Are you advocating for either? We are not, Your Honor. The state is not. All right. And what I'm going to do then, uh, is there a concession by the defense that the homicide was not excusable or justified? Yes, Your Honor. And I will remove from 7.1 all reference to excuse, excusable and justified homicide. Your Honor, one brief issue. I know that this is part of the standard instructions, but just for the record we do waive lesser included offenses. So just putting it out there. State, do you wish for second degree and manslaughter to be given? No, sir. Very well. I would suggest using the first line under introduction to homicide, and where it says Charles Adelson is accused of first degree murder in count one of the indictment, and um, then read the last sentence of that just above count one which says I now instruct you on the circumstances that must be proved for Charles Edison may be found guilty of first degree murder end up with a period get rid of the or lesser including crime one moment what is the defense's position as to the proposed edit we're fine with that your honor all right 
Then it will read as requested, Charles Adelson is accused of first degree murder in count one of the indictment. I will just add, I will now instruct you on the circumstances that must be proved before Charles Adelson may be found guilty of first degree murder. That's fine, Your Honor. And for all the edits that I'm making right now, everyone will receive a copy of this as well. Your Honor, a very minor. Go ahead. Minor. Uh, <laughs> um, the indictment numbers the counts with non-Roman numerals. I don't know. So I don't know if you want to just keep it consistent. Want to say instead of count one, no Roman numeral one, just use the number one. I'm not wedded to it, but obviously just consistency. I don't think it makes a difference, but Mr. Evans, do you have a position? Not sure. Mm -hmm. I'll just give the Roman numerals. Okay. <laughs> All right. The italicized portion in 7.2, I'm going to remove. And I believe the state, Mr. Evans, is the state only theory going to be premeditated. Yes, sir. So I would suggest doing away with when it says there are two ways to yes. put that entire section together because I think it would read fine. I now instruct you on the circumstances must be proved before Charles Edison may be found guilty of first degree murder. To prove the crime of first degree premeditated murder would be the next sentence. Yes, sir. All right. As to the elements, element one, Daniel Markell is dead. And I wasn't certain if you all wanted it to read Dan or Daniel. It really doesn't make a difference, I believe, but is there a preference? Um, it's alleged in the indictment. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what we did last. Last time it was Daniel. Daniel. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, we can go with Daniel because I think they've identified him as well. So very well. Elements one, two, and three. Really, the only thing that would the court has edited with this are just changing the names of defendant and victim. Element one, Daniel Markell is dead. Element two, the death was caused by the criminal act of Charles Adelson. Element three, there was a premeditated killing of Daniel Markell. Any objection or request as to the three elements? No, Your Honor. No, sir. All right, moving on to the definitions. An act will be given. Killing with premeditation will be given. The question of premeditation will be given and then the rest of the instruction deals with legally adequate provocation i assume this is not being requested since there's no argument for it being justified or excusable state's not requesting it your honor defense same same your honor all reference then to legally adequate provocation will be removed and the instruction will end at the definition of the question of premeditation and the state is waiving all lessers as well yes sir. and the defense specifically is waiving all lesser included yes sir. and all reference to lesser included will be removed and also from the verdict form as well all right and that will take us right into after the instruction on first degree murder 3.5a principles state is requesting that instruction your honor very well it will read if the defendant helped another person or persons commit a crime the defendant is a principal and must be treated as if he had done all things the other person or persons did if the defendant had a conscious intent that the criminal act be done and the defendant did some act or said some word which was intended to and which did incite, cause, encourage, assist, or advise the other person or persons to actually commit the crime. To be a principal, the defendant does not have to be present when the crime is committed or attempted. And essentially, it would just be the standard language. Does the defense have any objection or request that wish, wishes to raise? No, Your Honor. 3.5B, principles, when active participant hired by defendant, State is requesting that one as well. 
All right, as to number three within 3.5b, I edited this to read, the crime was committed by Sigfredo Garcia and or Luis Rivera. Do you wish there to be any other edits? Mm. I think that that's fine with us, John. Mr. Evans? Yes, sir, that will be fine. After 3.5b, this is where earlier when I was suggesting intent as a standalone instruction from 13.1. This is where I would otherwise think it's a good place for it to be inserted. It would just read intent in capital letters and below. The intent with which an act is done is an operation of the mind and therefore is not always capable of direct and positive proof. It may be established by circumstantial evidence like any other fact in a case. Does the state have any position about giving in the definition of intent as a standalone instruction or where it should go. No, sir, that would be an acceptable spot. Defense? Your Honor, I, I don't believe it's necessary because principle in particular does talk about conscious intent. I, I don't know that we need an, a separate instruction on it. Well, it certainly incorporates the word intent, but nowhere, I believe, is intent defined specifically. I, I, I don't believe this separate intent instruction was used in the prior trial. Well, I, I don't know about the first one, but I don't believe it was in the, the instructions in the previous case. I, I don't think it's necessary. So we would object. All right. Well, Mr. Evans? I do not believe it was included in the, the last one. I don't believe either side requested it. Um, we, would, you know, we are okay with it and would request that it be given. All right. The test for... <laughs> The inclusion of an instruction, I believe, is found at Butler versus State, 14, Southern 3rd, 269, with the factors being an instruction accurately states the applicable law, the facts in the case support giving the instruction, and the instruction was necessary to allow the jury to properly resolve all issues in the case. Whether or not the defendant has acted with intent as it relates to the primary offense, first degree murder, I don't think anyone is disputing whatsoever. I'm going to give the instruction as requested from the state as it does meet the grounds outlined in Butler. Is there any argument as to where it should be positioned within the instructions themselves? It could either go where it is, or it could be placed after the um, the reasonable doubt instruction. I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other. Does the defense have a position as to where it would be positioned? I think. I'm sorry. Did you see? Yeah. No. I think it, if it's going to be included, it should be before reasonable doubt. I do not have a problem with sticking it before we pull out. Very well, I will move it there. Right, moving on to count two, conspiracy to commit. And Mr. Evans, you would ask that this read first degree murder? Yes, sir. No objection. Right, element one, the intent of Charles Adelson was that the offense of first degree murder would be committed. And then as to element two, I'm just going to remove the italicized portion 
because we've already defined first degree murder in the instructions, I don't believe we need to repeat it. Is either party asking for it? No, sir. No, you're all right, moving on to element two, in order to carry out the intent, Charles Adelson, Mr. Evans, which of the bracketed portions are you asking for? We would ask for all four, Your Honor. Very well. I will just place a semicolon after each one. And I would request that um, between combined and confederated that an or be placed. That's fine. You said after the semicolon or before it? It would be after the semicolon if I'm yes. correct. Just making sure. <laughs> All right, element two, in order to carry out the intent, Charles Adelson agreed, conspired, combined, or confederated with Catherine McBanawa, and this was another edit I made, and other co-conspirators to cause the first degree murder to be committed either by them or one of them or by some other person. Is there any objection or request? No, sir. I don't know that he's accused in the indictment, Your Honor, of conspiring with others. I think. Let me bring up the indictment. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you know what, Your Honor? No objection. Very well. Let me go back to how that will read once again. In order to carry out the intent, Charles Adelson agreed, conspired, combined, or confederated with Catherine McManawa and or other co-conspirators to cause the first degree murder to be committed either by them or one of them or by some other person it is not necessary that and the state's asking for all four again yes sir it is not necessary that the agreement conspiracy combination or confederation to commit first degree murder be expressed in any particular words or that words pass between the conspirators. It is not necessary that the defendant do any act in furtherance of the offense conspired. It pertains to the good faith affirmative defense of renunciation. Is there any argument for this? Not from the defense, Your Honor. Not from the state. We don't believe there's any evidence of it, Your Honor. I'll remove it. I don't believe there's any evidence either, but better to ask the question than just delete. There are no category one lesser included of count two. Are there any being requested by the defense? No, yeah. Or the state? No, sir. Moving on to count three, the wording of the header, solicitation to commit first degree murder. Is that the state's request once again? Yes, sir. prove the crime of criminal solicitation, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Element one, and this is where I've edited this during the trial, but it would read, Charles Adelson solicited Catherine McBenoit, Sigfredo Garcia, and or Luis Rivera to commit first degree murder. Any objection or request? No, sir. No, Your Honor. Element two, during the solicitation, Charles Adelson and of the bracketed portions, Mr. Evans, which are being requested? All four. And the or being in place consistent with what we did in prior instruction. Very well.
starting back at the beginning. During the solicitation, Charles Adelson commanded, encouraged, hired, or requested Catherine McBenawa, Sigfredo Garcia, and or Luis Rivera to engage in specific conduct which would constitute the commission of first degree murder. It is not necessary that the defendant do any act in furtherance of the offense solicited. The crime of first degree murder has been previously defined in these instructions. And the one definition that would be given would be to solicit the affirmative defense, again, concerning renunciation. This would be removed unless there's any argument for keeping it. None from the state. No, Your Honor. Well, following then count three, the definition of intent would be given as a standalone instruction. Then we would move into 3.7, plea of not guilty, reasonable doubt, and burden of proof. 3.9, weighing the evidence. And then going into the witness testimony specifically of the give as applicable portion, which are being asked for. I believe from what I've heard, all but number 10. Defense. Well, I think we want six, seven, eight. I think nine, I think we ought to take out. I don't know if anyone's been convicted of a misdemeanor, so I don't know if that's applicable. Certainly felony. I don't know that there's been. I don't think there's been any. Reputation evidence per se. I don't believe there's been any specific. That's the reason the state isn't requesting it. Right, 10 will be removed then. As to nine, you're just asking, has the witness been convicted of a felony and put the question mark there? Yes, sir. Ms. Myers? That's fine. For eight, I will just put an or between he and she. It would read, the witness at some other time make a statement that's inconsistent with the testimony he or she gave in court. That's fine. Right, law enforcement witness, is this being requested? Under the give as applicable, next give as applicable section? Yes, your honor. Very well. The fact that a witness is employed in law enforcement does not mean that his or her. Correct, yes, your honor. Testimony deserves more or less consideration than that of any other witness. We have had multiple experts. I assume the parties want this to be given as well. Yes, sir. Accomplices and informants. The amening can stop from the defense table for this one. All right, as the bracketed portion claims to have helped the defendant commit a crime and hopes to gain favorable treatment would be the ones I think are most appropriate as anything else being asked for. I think, your honor, that the immunity piece is important because Ms. Nekbanawa was given, was offered immunity at various points. I don't have any objection to it because also remember Ms. Adelson testified. Right. Then it will read, for example, a witness who claims to have helped the defendant commit a crime, comma, has been promised immunity from prosecution, comma, or hopes to gain more favorable treatment. I guess this really isn't a his or her. This is just really her case. Mr. Evans, is there any objection to editing out his and the or from hopes to gain? We would object, your honor. I don't know that the evidence came out at trial, but Mr. Rivera has written quite a few letters to the state and I believe he's filed a number of motions asking for a reduced sentence based on his cooperation and testimony. So I believe it's... Well, if it didn't come out in trial, those would be facts, not evidence, would they not? 
They would be, but <laughs> I, I Okay, Ms. Meyer, fine, there's, there's not a good faith argument for arguing facts, not in evidence. Yeah, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's not good faith, it's just confused. So, no, that's fine, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Evans, unless you have an issue, I'll leave it in. But really, the only person the jury has heard that's hoping to gain favorable treatment is Ms. McBanawa. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I don't have any objection to removing it. Very well hopes to gain more favorable treatment in her own case. May have a reason to make a false statement in order to strike a good bargain with the state. All right, at this portion, it will remain his or her because this would go to both Rivera and McBanawan. There are no children witnesses in this matter. The defendant has testified, so that will be given. The defendant in this case has become a witness. You should apply the same rules to consideration of his testimony that you apply to the other witnesses. Witness talk to lawyer, is this being requested? Yes, Your Honor, I believe they have both sides, from what I understand, or from what I saw, all, several witnesses admitted talking to lawyers. Right. And I will just place an or between his and her. No, no and the given all cases will be given. Yes. Uh, Your Honor, Ms. Meyer. I'm not sure I remember what testimony that is about witness talking to a lawyer. Other than the defendant talking to his own attorney. And I don't know that that warrants any, any, any instruction. Are you asking for it to be removed? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Evans, is there a specific piece of the testimony that you're referring to for why one you wish is, it to remain? One of the defendant did, I recall, testify this morning that he had talked to his lawyer. Um, and then... I'm trying to remember during the direct or cross of Ms. Banawa if there was any discussion about her talking with her lawyer or with the prosecutor. I believe in reference to both the proffer and also the lack of her attorneys being here, it came up in both contexts. Is there any further argument from the defense? I would think this line is fairly benign. It's not otherwise alluding to anyone doing something improper. Oh, yeah. Yes, Your Honor. I think in connection with the proffers, Ms. Magdanawa, the state is correct. Ms. Magdanawa did testify that she did not speak to her or did not have her lawyers present. So that's... Present in the courtroom or present during the proffer itself? Present in the proffer is what I believe she said, or maybe she was referring to the courtroom. But either way, it's fine, Your Honor. Very well. Defendant's statements will be given and an objection or request to the wording. I don't believe the defense... My understanding is 3.9 refers to statements that Mr. Adelson would have made to police and he was never interviewed by police. If you're asking for it to be removed, I'll remove it. Oh, yes, Your Honor. I apologize. Very well. I do believe this does raise the context of law enforcement statements at the same time as there was an active wire. It kind of straddles that line, but I will remove unless the state is asking for it to be given for some reason. No, sir. I'm not asking for it to be given. Right. Rules for deliberation, 3.10. Any objection or request? Not from the defense, Your Honor. That's fine, Your Honor. Cautionary instruction, any objection or request? No, sir. No, Your Honor. 3.12 sub A, any objection or request? No, sir. 3.12 verdict, any objection or request? No, sir. 
I will modify the verdict form to get rid of the lessers for count one. Yes, sir. That it will read, we the jury find as follows as to count one of the indictment, first degree murder, check only one letter choice as to this count, option A, the defendant is guilty of first degree murder, Option B, the defendant is not guilty as to count one. Count two, we the jury find as follows as the count two of the indictment, conspiracy to commit, and I'll just make it consistent here, first degree murder. Check only one letter choice as to this count. <coughs> Option A, the defendant is guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder. Option B, the defendant is not guilty as to count two. Count three, we the jury find as follows as the count three of the information. Solicitation to commit first degree murder. Your Honor, I believe on that. I believe it should read indictment. Oh, yes, it should. Thank you. We, the jury, find as follows the count three of the indictment, solicitation to commit first-degree murder. Check only one letter choice as to this count. Option A, the defendant is guilty of solicitation to commit first-degree murder. Option B, the defendant is not guilty as to count three, and then to be signed and dated by the four person. The November, I believe? Yes. Oh, I've, I've already made that change. <laughs> you were an optimist when you put the October. Well, you, know, you never know. <laughs> All right, 2.7, closing. Any objection or request? No, sir. 3.13, <laughs> submitting the case. Really the main edit uh, to be made in this is what will go back with them. Uh, I was confused on that, Your Honor. What I have in my edit now is the audio, cell phone summary, discs, jump drives, photographic, and video exhibits will be sent into the jury room when you begin to deliberate. If you wish to see any other exhibits, please request that in writing. Except Defense? That's fine. I think the main thing as it relates to any disc or multimedia uh, piece of evidence, nothing else is on there except what needs to be on there. So it's not causing <clears throat> any potential for a mistrial. If you all need to review what is going to go back to ensure this. It's probably a good idea, especially since we have all afternoon, but that would that would be me putting a bug in your ears, so there, there's nothing going back there that shouldn't be. We will, we have no, we have not submitted any electronic evidence, Your Honor, but we will confer with the state to ensure that the transcripts aren't part of the, yes. of the wires that go back. Because I believe all of those were just demonstrative for being out here. Once they're in there, it's just the raw footage or raw audio. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Right. Any other requests or objections as to the instructions? No, sir. Here. I will send both sides a copy of what has just been edited on my screen. You'll have an opportunity to review it further if you wish. And before we get started on Monday morning, uh, if something needs to be changed, well, I'll put it this way. If, some, if you're asking for anything else, please email my assistant immediately so that way on Monday we can just jump into it and keep rolling. Yes. Right. We are in recess.